Hi, everybody. So as part of the HTS uh, token video that I promised you all that I would create, I have the absolute pleasure of being with Urban Watkins um, from Dovu. So Urban, thank you so much for agreeing to have a quick chat with me about Dovu, the project and the, the token. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Happy to uh, happy to chat all things Dovu. Yeah, fantastic. So I think the first thing to say is the, the reason this came about is because there seems to be Hadira really seems to be attracting a lot of attention and liquidity, and, and it's all positive. And that seems to be, to me, that's a lot of that seems to be coming through the HDS tokens on Hadira, and Dovu is absolutely no exception to that. There also seems to be two different type of HDS token. There seems to be sort of the more mean coin, uh, and then there also seems to be tokens of a serious business, a serious project, and yours definitely fits in the latter. So for people who just aren't aware, could you could you briefly touch on what exactly Dovu does? Yeah, sure. We're, we're, we're building a, a protocol stroke platform, depending on who you talk to, um, for green credits, really, for green um, ecological credits. Uh, we built it on The Guardian uh, with the full support of HBAR Foundation, you know, and, uh, and Hedera. We built it on there for all the environmental credentials, um, but also because of the basically the gas fees, you know, the, the ability for us to sort of have a fixed payment for, for large volumes of transactions. But that's really what we are. It's a, it's a technology platform to enable sort of the onboarding of green credits on a global scale, you know, and for them to be counted and credited um, correctly on, uh, on the hash graph. Okay, fantastic. And you're live, aren't you? This is a real life pro project now. We're live. We've got partners all around the world. Um, some exciting news recently where we uh, launched some um, credits over in India, you know, with a project supported by the Indian government. Actually, it was the Indian Transport Minister, Minister for Transport that launched the project over there. So we have a huge, huge opportunity over in India for us, but actually all around the world. So we're live um, and have been for some time. Yeah. And I've been following your progress and it has been fantastic. Um, you touched on an interesting point there because a lot of the businesses I talk to who are considering getting into Web3 have, have basically said that a lot of the other projects have failure built in. And the, and the reason they say that uh, is because, because fees are you typically priced in the native cryptocurrency, um, it's very hard for them to predict, for well, number one, to do things at scale. Um, and it's also, it's like punishing because if they bring out a massive use case on a particular chain, and because of that use case, the price of the native crypto doubles, their costs have just doubled. So they just attributed significantly to their business costs, their operational costs doubling. And they also, the second part to that, which is obviously, it's perverse, isn't it? It's, it's the wrong way around. Um, and and set, the second part of that is that they, they feel like they have to become futures traders because they have to try and work out, do they buy, is this a low price? And if it is a low price, should we buy a load of it in order to, to, to sort of future-proof our transaction transactional cost? Or is the price going to go lower if the price goes higher and we haven't bought any, we haven't hedged? You know, it's just a minefield and it's just another layer of com complication. The businesses just don't need, they just want to get on with business. 100%. I mean, you don't want to be treasury managing your gas fees. You don't want to be treasury managing your cost of business. You know, I mean, it's it's yeah. there's enough complexity sort of in this. And I think that's one thing that, that probably isn't talked about enough is the is the sort of the, the ability to scale on Hedera, you know, far more effectively than in, than than any other sort of chain. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, so just touching on your token, then you you, you obviously have uh, the, the Dovu token, which is D-O-V-U, the, the, the token price. Can you touch on that? Are you happy? Because I'm just looking at a chart here on my other screen. And, you know, in December of last year, the token was at 302. And today it's at 202. So it's 10 x from December of last year. Do, do you know, do you have any inkling as to why that's happened? <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> there's the there's the ten million dollar question. I think the um, I think actually what what we're seeing is, I mean, you can look at what's happening with Source and what's happening with Source Swap and the sort of volumes that are coming on there. I think that people are are um, as retail starts to come back into crypto, people are then looking across other chains and other opportunities and ones where there are low fees 
easy entry, um, uh, their perception of undervalued sort of uh, undervalued projects, ones that haven't had the sort of publicity. Um, and I think it's it's really as a I, I believe it's as a result of a couple of things. You know, you've got Hashpack, you know, which is a, I think is a great wallet. You've got Sourcer Swap, which is again a, a you know a fork of Uniswap, so people are familiar with it. You know, uh, who are using decentralized exchanges. Um, you've got sort of this, you know, hash port, the ability to sort of port tokens over, you know, from other chains as well, so that you can play within uh, within Bidera. All of those things coming together create an environment, I think, where you're getting more and more people sort of comfortable in uh, in 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 doing that. And I think the um, and that's a sort of side effect as well of what's been happening on Solana. You know, um, people have sort of moved from Ethereum to play. On a retail side on Solana, and then they go, oh well, I might as well try another one because actually it's not that not that hard. So I think it's a to me it's a sort of combination of that those things, but um, creating the right environment and the right tools to enable retail to come and play, I think, has been a, a, a major point and one that I think the sort of foundation and Adira need to support massively. Okay, and does the what does the price of uh, what? relation to the price of Dovu does it have to the company itself do you wake up every morning and check check the price of of your token or does it make no real significant difference to the to the business obviously you as an individual will presumably own some Dovu so as you as an individual it makes a difference but as a company does it is it is it like a share price or does it make no difference yeah I mean it's the it's the constant I mean if you look at Dovu, I mean, we did an ICO back in 2017 on Ethereum. You know, we our first token was on Ethereum. We we sort of moved it over to a HTS token in sort of November of last year. Um, as a as a but our, our intent, of course, all at all times was to build a serious company and not just build a token company. You know, our first investor was Jaguar Land Rover. Um, you know, the car company, the the investors in the business. So um, you know, we were always serious about building a, a, a serious business. The the but then you are, you know, you, you do have two different communities to manage. You've got your business community, such as our projects over uh, over in India, where we're sort of creating credits, you know, supported by the Indian government. And then you've got people who are buying a token for their own reasons, for whatever that is. And and without a doubt, most of that is speculative. Um, so you've got, and then what you need to do is bridge the two between the utility of the token. So what use does this token have within Dovu? And we're, we're building out that utility within a product that we call Dovu OS, um, where the Dovu token is required at all for all elements of use within our protocol. So if you want to mint some carbon, if you want to sell some carbon, if you want to do whatever you like, you know, from a data perspective within our platform, you're going to need a Dovu token. So the, um, and so the price is sort of, it's, it's fun or not fun, depending, <laughs> you know, in reality, right? You know, you if we were looking at price of our token, we'd have probably closed our business quite some time ago, you know, when in the sort of bear market, you know, so therefore I take the highs and the lows with the same mentality where it's sort of focus on the main thing, make your, make your one thing, your main thing of focus. And that's a build in a serious business with a great utility, you know, and delivering these green credits, you know, uh, globally around the world all on chain. I think that's really important. The price of the token is out of our hands. It's totally in the hands of of this of, of really speculation. And 75% yeah. of our tokens are in the hands of the community. We still have 25% left uh, within the sort of treasury of the business, but everything else is circulating and they're all they're all circulated really because from a treasury perspective nothing is vested so it's all of it's available to be sold um, or traded or used so um you know with it within the business so it's a long okay. answer to your question but it's like yeah I, I, of course i look at the price of the token everybody looks especially in a in a bull market everybody's refreshing coin gecko to see what the heck's going on but it has no real core relevance to our to our to our to our business um and again, going back to the Hedera fixed price aspect of it, our token cost it doesn't bear, you know, in relation to the cost of us being able to deliver the business. Okay. Um, 
So you you touched on that that you will you need the token in order the token has utility in the sense that you need the token to operate on your network effectively. Is, is there anything in your roadmap or in your plans that might be utility for your other client bases? You said you've got kind of two groups. You've got the business side, and then you've got the sort of Hedera community, HDS token community. Is there anything you might offer to them in in the form of airdrops or you know early passes to to something? Is, is there anything like that in the roadmap, or is the token just for the business? No, I mean the I mean we we have a fantastic staking mechanism for our Dover token. It's been um, you know we we um, actually forked it. You know uh, it was open source from Galaxy. I mean I think where we uh, where we where we where we got it from. You know again a great collaboration between. Hedera sort of companies, um, and I'm a huge fan of Solo and what what Galaxy are doing. The um, so this staking mechanism we have right now is that you it's based on multipliers, it's based on actions. So if you buy some carbon credits, for example, um, and you hold sort of Dovu tokens, you get a multiplier in terms of your staking. And the way that that's going to map out is that we will be doing partners with other Hedera um, um, sort of projects. Where again, you know, if you hold a particular project's token plus a Dovu token plus some carbon credits, you know, your stake in multipliers will go up and so on. So um, it's really all about sort of creating a, a, a vibrant ecosystem to the benefit of everybody. And for Dovu's perspective, you know, we want to be the ecological partner of all projects on Hedera and not just Hedera, everywhere else, but, um, but certainly on Hedera so that everybody should be holding a Dovu token. You know, plus the token of our partner, and then there's there's benefit then for the individual to to do that. That's the sort of path that we'll be going down there. In terms of token drops, yeah, I think that's that's inevitable. As more wallets get created on the Hedera ecosystem, it just makes sense where we put where we have Dovu in all of those wallets in some form or another. Okay, um, fantastic, and, and that's really exciting because. What's going to come out of those collaborations is going to be really, really interesting to see. And, and they'll be with projects that might not even exist today. So even you don't know what they might look like down the road. So that's, that's really exciting to learn. If people want to learn more about staking with Dovu, where do they go to do that? Yeah, if you go onto our website um, um, and uh, it's it's all there or join our Discord. Um, and if you join our Discord, we have a we have really good channel, staking channel on there that sort of covers all things staking. Um, okay. Or on Twitter, just follow Dovu official on Twitter, and okay. uh, you'll see. What's the website there. address? Could just remind me. Is it? In... Yeah, it's Dovu.earth. Yeah, Dovu.earth, and I'll also put a link in the description below, guys. So you can just click on that. I'll put a link to all the the different partners in the description below. So two more questions. Um, one is now I know there's absolutely no promise of of, of, of price action in the future. You don't know the future, etc. And the, the, this is not speculative, but I'm asking you personally, where would you, where do you believe, what do you believe Dovu's, once everything's settled, the market's matured, where do you see Dovu's value in terms of price? Where, where does it sit? Yeah, it's really hard to talk about price. What I, what I can talk about is things that we're doing to increase liquidity and utility. And, you know, by the very nature of a a token that's already minted and has a finite amount of supply, then by increasing utility, um, and increasing sort of the liquidity, then that should 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 have a sort of a positive effect. Um, I think what's important is from Dovu's next step really is to move from a liquidity pool outside of decentralized exchanges and and onto some centralized exchanges. Um, personally, I'm a huge fan of decentralized exchanges, and I'm not a massive fan of centralized ones. But you know, if you're going to introduce new um, community members into the into the sort of um, into Dovu, then you have to make you have to have a system that stops them being protocol native. So you know you need centralized exchanges to bring people who don't care whether it's on Hedera or not. They just want to participate and join the the sort of Dovu um, the Dovu journey. So that's going to be happening over the next um, over the next few weeks. We'll be just um, you know launching more or launching new centralized exchanges. Um, and then from a utility perspective, it's really the more projects that we're onboarding into Dovu, the more tokens are needed in order to facilitate those, those projects. What we're seeing then is demand. From a demand side, 
you know, there's two things that you need to do with a token, really. You, you need to sort of slow down the external velocity of the token within your ecosystem. So you need to have utility so that that token stays within your system um, and has use within that system. You know, uh, you, sorry, you need to speed that up within your system. Then you need yes. to slow yeah. down the external, sorry, <laughs> slow down the external side of it. So, um, you know, the demand is there because you need over tokens in order to sort of uh, function um, within our platform. And then the sales side of it, you know, will 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 slow down in terms of the volume of of sales, not not the, I mean the amount of of sales that are on there. So the um, so I think that the basically increase liquidity, you know, create new markets, um, build utility in the in the business, all of those things, uh, and and then of course raise your profile, marketing, 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 um, yeah. all of those. Those things will have an effect. One thing that we're not going to be doing is trying to sort of create some false, we've never done this, false sort of pump dump sort of mechanics to sort of, uh, um, it's really got to be sustainable for for for, for it to make sense. But yeah, that's wise, absolutely clear from the way you, from the way you, uh, you know, um, present yourselves, the way you operate. You are, I think everybody who is aware of you is aware that you are a serious company, you know, with a real purpose. Um, and the token is almost secondary to, well, it definitely is secondary to that. Um, you have a 10, sorry, go on. Yeah, sorry, Max. It's secondary on the price inside of it, but it's 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 absolutely fundamental to our business. It's secondary in terms of the short-term pumps and the gains and and the FOMO and all the other sort of elements in it. But if you actually, so another answer to that first question, you know, that you had about sort of price side of it, we're, we're just getting started, you know, from a project itself. You know, we're we're live, absolutely. You know, um, the, the technology is working, but we're really, really just getting started. So it, as as Dovu grows, then then I'd expect the token to uh, to be a lot more interesting. Okay, perfect. And the supply is 10 billion, is that correct? And is that is that fixed? Is that going to stay uh, as is forever? It's fixed. Um, it's interesting. The forever bit. I we have no intention to do anything with it whatsoever. You know, um, it's fixed. And then you know, from our perspective, it would be governance through the community if we were going to change that. So we okay. we have a governing sort of mechanism. You're able to, if you're a token owner, you can sort of vote. Um, and therefore, if the community felt that we needed to change that, then uh, then we would take a take a view on that. Oh, right. OK, that's a really interesting element that I, I wasn't aware of. So there's a bit of a down situation, is there? Sort of you people can vote and... and... Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm hesitant to use the word DAO. It's sort of overused and it's, it's, it's at the moment there are very few DAOs because the, the amount of control, you know, even us, we have, we have a lot of control right now over the governance, of course, of the voting. And, and we want to make that less and less and less as, the, as it goes forward. As the treasury gets deployed in the uh, building of the business, then the, there's less sort of, con there's, there are less larger sort of wallets and wallet holders. Um, but I think ultimately, as I say, the seventy-five percent of the tokens are in circulation. So you know, by creating a, a, a pro rata type um, governance approach, then people, everybody can have a voice and a sort of say in it. Okay, fantastic. Um, last question: um, Which three other HTS tokens? They can be sort of memes or, or business tokens of other companies. Which are your favorite three in order? I don't know about in order, but I mean, Galaxy, I mean, I'm a big fan of what they're doing and uh, and their plans sort of going forward. I think the PAC token is going to be really exciting. And I think um, um, so I'm really excited about that. And Source, I mean, I love what those guys have done, you know, and yeah. and those are the those are the three that I look at. Oh, obviously not PAC yet, but um, those are the two that I look at. And then the other ones sort of coming through. I have to mention Tune FM, you know, because... I think I'm really excited about the potential for that project, and they're really Hedera OGs, and it's sort of uh, and their time in the sun is uh, is well 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 due. Yeah, I couldn't agree more actually, and I think that's one of the most undervalued tokens there is, there is at the moment. Um, I also have to think that with yourselves because I because I know what you're doing and I know where you're going. So it's very exciting times ahead, and it's nice to have this kind of side price action if you like uh but also you're still in the Hedera ecosystem you're still supporting the wider ecosystem but you're seeing some really interesting price action and some real potential on a small scale within that ecosystem so that's really nice and i think it's something really nice for the community to have um you know to have sub communities of the community and things like that and you have many cheerleaders um so thank you so much for your time i know you're incredibly busy
and you've got to go back to saving the planet. Um, <laughs> thanks, Max. I really appreciate your time and uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk about Dover. No problem at all. Thank you ever so much. Hi, everyone. So next up is I have the absolute pleasure of being with John Wingate, who is the founder and, and CEO, I think that's right, of Bank Social. Um, so what a whirlwind adventure it's been so far. We have met some really interesting, weird, wonderful, small, mean coin, massive project people, serious business and everything in between. The interview just before this one, John, I was actually deep in the metaverse with some of the guys from HBAR Suite. So we've met the super, super technical geeky guys. And now we're going to have a really interesting conversation with you from more of a banking perspective, which is going to be really interesting, being as the topic of this kind of whole mega video is HTS, Hedera Token Service, and kind of um, coins and, and currency. And that's kind of where you sit. So this will be a really, really interesting one. So thank you very much for your time on this one, John. Uh, how are you to begin with? I'm excellent. And for the record, I like to consider myself a technical geeky guy, too. So I, I yeah. just wanted to state that for the record there. Matt. OK, for the record, I also <laughs> you're a bit of a DJ as well. So I think you're you're a, you're a good mix of serious and fun. Yeah, thank you. OK, good. I'm glad you acknowledge that. Good. OK, um, so let, let's jump straight into it for, for, for people who haven't seen my because I have covered you before in my previous board video. But for people that may this might be their first um, um, YouTube video watching of mine. Um, for people aren't familiar, can you just give us a very top line of what Bank Social is and does? Yep. So Bank Social is a, a Web three based open banking company. So we offer all types of uh, products and services that are centered around Web three decentralization, um, built on Hedera. And our primary focus and our primary market penetration point has been American credit unions and now spreading out into uh, the, the worldwide kind of cooperative financial institution um, regulated is, I think, an important key here that we're focused on regulated um, around the world. And so generally, that's what we do. And we'll, we'll get no, we won't talk about that part too much in general. We'll talk more about the HTS token, the BSL DAO, the token today. But generally, as a company, we're marrying D DeFi and CFI in all these various components, and it's it's built on um, Hedera as the primary uh, um, rail for enablement of Web three. Yeah, it's the tech that you're built built on effectively. Okay, so there's been it's becoming more and more clear that there are two camps in sort of uh, Hedera token service in tokens on the Hedera network. And the first camp is meme coins that promise nothing, a bit of a casino lots of fun. A few of them offer kind of sort of secondary utility, but not really. And, and Grelf in particular was like, I make no promises, I give nothing. It's like, this this is what it is. It's a bit of fun, it's speculative, and it is what it is. Dead honest, not upfront. And then the other camp seems to be serious businesses, you know, real world businesses that have a token that in, in, at some level plays an intricate part into the way the business operates. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you fit in the latter camp that you have, you are a serious, obviously a serious business that has a token that people can get involved with. Is that a fair assessment? Well, let's let's break it down a little bit more than that. Generally, yes, the, the terms of this is serious and there is a business spun up specifically for the token and the token holders called the BSL DAO, which is a registered DAO in uh, um, Wyoming. So yeah, there's absolutely um, a well thought um, you know, kind of best in class, leading edge version of what a DeFi community can do in the terms of um, participating as a as a normal business would. Um, and, you know, some of the things that we established that we may have been one of the first, if not the first to establish was, you know, voting. Um, we essentially, when we did the um, uh, the resolution of the entity that LLC in Wisconsin, we had to put the on-chain data that where the smart contract lived for the voting and the token holder mechanisms. And we had to identify the government, the governance website, which is the place where essentially what you would consider more of an operating agreement or articles of, uh, of incorporation. Um, we had to work with the state um, quite, quite extensively to identify those components, get them uh, written properly in the defining documents with the state and make sure that they referenced back and gave the DAO holders that referenceable 
uh, regulated entity that tied back to on-chain activity, the smart contract, the token holders, the governance website, the snapshot voting, all those things are tied out uh, legally with the entity, which is, I think, really exciting when you look at the potential possibilities. And this is why we've extended that into the credit union ecosystem is because we do believe that DAOs can eventually turn into, um, just like the BSL DAO, uh, these DAOs can have lending components. And so we've already talked to credit unions, for example, about the BSL DAO participating in loans, in business loans, because most credit unions don't do business loans. They go to outside third parties for those. And the business market doesn't have the same, you know, with usury laws and consumer finance protection. Um, consumer finance is quite different from business finance. And so there's really a, a massive opportunity here to prove a proving ground, almost as almost a, um, you know, think about it like um, the the early stages of of what Web three companies were doing with e commerce is a really kind of good parallel here. But uh, yeah, that's that's what we're doing, and we're doing it in a Web three way uh, through and through and across the board, and making that a paramount focus of every product feature and thing that we roll out. But the the DAO component and the seriousness of the token, you know, let's just talk about that real quick. The token, the HTS token, uh, really, when we migrated from Ethereum, you know, we were all smart contract base. And, you know, be benefits, po you know, positives and negatives to it. Um, with HTS, we know that we get code that is built for, you know, all, all these different kind of base use cases. And we happen to perfectly align. And we've even come up with some novel approaches to... Um, you know, getting around things like the fee on transfer. I know a lot of the the uh, uh, DEXs have reached out and they're like, is it going to impact? It's like, no, we figured out how to do this without impacting DEX swaps and only make, you know, it's not going to change the underlying core functionality. So we see a tremendous so, sorry, opportunity. Let me just stop you there. What, what are DEX swaps for the people who are watching? Who don't yeah, know? so, you know, decentralized exchanges are essentially the mechanisms that, that people in these uh, De DeFi ecosystems use to trade in and out of different ecosystems. That's the way I look at it, right? Forget the price, forget all that. It's a decentralized trading mechanism that allows me to, in a trustless way, trade a token with you, Max, right? That's really what this is. And whether you do that in the form of creating a liquidity pool, or if there's some order book matching that is not technically order book matching, but it, to, to explain it in kind of a web two or a tr traditional finance way, um, it doesn't exactly work like that, but um, it basically gives us a trustless mechanism, right? Um, to create these intricate mechanisms for swapping, um, swapping these tokens yeah. um so you're like swapping h bar for or for bsl for example in a self-custody manner right we both interact with the smart contract on the left and right side whether you're a liquidity provider or whether you're selling a token and i'm buying a token um you know some of them have gone really intricate on uh kind of cross token swap so it's not always a direct path maybe there's a you're trying to you know there might not be a liquidity pool for H bar to US to BSL, there is, but or or BSL to USDC is probably a better. So the DEX will allow for that interoperability of the trading because it says, oh, okay, I've got an H bar BSL pool, I've got an H bar USD pool. Let me swap with the liquidity providers behind the scene, and there's no centralized intermediary doing it. It's really quite remarkable. These things are really, yeah, really cool. Really, to have. really exciting. And where that could go in terms of, you know, this is like a little Petri dish really compared to the web two world and what you might be able to access with all of your customers and clients. That's really, really a special opportunities there. And it's, and it's really special on Hedera because of the features of HTS. Like I, I'm really excited that the, um, the Dex is on Hedera, you know, Saucer and a couple of the other ones, um, they've really, um, enhanced. I think if you look at all the other DEXs, when you look at them, they're almost clones of each other, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but, you know, things can work differently with HTS on Hedera. And we've got this untapped market, really, and we were talking about it on the, the spaces I was on right before this, to, to build that bridge for DeFi to proliferate like it can't anywhere else. I mean, that is literally something that will happen and we're all working to make that happen. I think we're, we would like to think of ourselves as one of the major components in that with some of the features we're building and, and even open sourcing or generally um, assisting other community members in building those things. So the, the DEX, the wallet ecosystem and the HTS token, both fungible and non-fungible are, um, 
all reasons why we decided that, um, you know, mostly right now it's because the HTS token and really the ability to grow the ecosystem with a bunch of willing and super smart participants. You know, you really don't get this kind of ecosystem. Uh, Max, it's, it's hard to find another Max in the Ethereum ecosystem, right? Most of it's, handy. well, I mean, f frankly, it's just a lot of people that uh, feel like there's a way for them to promote meme coins and all these different types of things and they aren't looking at it with a objective view like business right there's the meme curl world nothing wrong with that nothing we both talked about how you know i admittedly i've been in meme coins um but we also look at the business side of these economies and you uh you know and especially the community here i'll, I'll give credit to the community in general they look at things from that type of view so the ability for and it's because i think the whole mechanism of HTS and even smart contracts, even the way smart contracts up to 300 TPS, right? And it's throt we can throttle that much higher. That's just the cap that's been set right now. It's not that it has to be there, but the ability to, we're doing very complex swaps in our, in our smart contracts, okay? And the same swaps on Ethereum are 20X, 30X, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and the consistency of the cost and i mean so so many reasons but hts was really the 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 genesis uh, about a year and a half ago where we said oh man we need to make the move strategically and and quickly and we need to la start launching all of our products via h you know hts where we can and definitely smart contract where we need much more complex like the if you look at the stablecoin studio the stablecoin studio is a compilation of HTS mechanisms and smart contracts mechanisms. So you can provide additional functionality that isn't available in, in HTS on top of. And I think that's also a unique when you add in HCS consensus service, right? And the ability to do like an app net where your app net is getting the benefit of, of the consensus service of the network. So the immutability of the network, the privacy speed and, and uh, centralization of your own network. So you kind of double there. Yeah. Then you add in HTS, right, as a mechanism that low cost base features, um, you know, much easier to program against that generally as a community building. And then you add in all the crazy sexiness of smart contracts. This is unlike anything else that that exists out there today. I couldn't agree more. It, it's the tech. Is, the tech is incredible. The, the, that allows all this, but the tech is only as good as the people that are using it. And Adira has been very lucky in attracting, I would say, a, a more mature uh, um, audience and a more and forward-looking community. Exactly. And th there's there's a lot of, as you said, there's a lot of short-sighted people on these other networks. That are like, how do I sugar rush stuff? How do I make a quick buck? in the next six months like how do i 10x how do i thousand x how do i rug how do i do this in the next 20 minutes whereas yeah there's there's some of that in, in hadira um some of it you know um malicious some of it not there's there's gambling there's memes there's all that stuff but, but there's an extra layer for sure and i think that might be because the the technology allows for that like how are you going to do that on ethereum because of the cost of uh, the gas fees and everything else that you just touched on so or even something on, like on, token associate, right? Just the fact that you have a token associate means that I can't get dusted. So our ability to build up a compliant framework, a more compliant framework with less risk of, so on Ethereum, whenever we, whenever we interact with Ethereum wallets, we like the amount of amount of hits, like alerts that we get with Ethereum wallets, because we don't just track the the actual wallet. We track other wallets, right? When yeah. we're when you're off ramping with us, not every wallet. We don't track wallets in the self custody wallet. But when you're off ramping with us, we need to know where that crypto's coming from, right? And so we look five, six in the H bar ecosystem. We've noticed that we don't have to do that hardly ever. And I don't think it's just, I don't think it's a fact of, oh, where there's so much more scams happening over there. I think it's has to do a lot with token associate as a main key feature, because we see a lot, like I've got wallets that have been dusted by bullshit that I've never even known was in there. I didn't know until I sold some crypto to, to our exchange. And it, it just so happened. I was one of the people that popped up and, and you know, about the guy who did the tornado cash dust, where as soon as they made it an OFAC wallet. He went out, he scanned for wallets with uh, large that did large uh, on look, Etherscan is tracking large moves of gas, right? He picked the top 20 wallets, sent them all a little bit of tornado dust dusting, and now they're OFAC uh, screwed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, I think, you know, there's a lot happening here that once the, but again, you can't build Uber 
and market Uber by telling people that it's using all this crazy shit in the background. They have to push the button and say, fucking cool. Look at what happened. That's yeah. the experience. That's the, that's where we're maturing right now. Just generally across web three. Yeah. The user, the user interface is becoming far more friendly. There's far more no code. And in fact, now people, people used to make excuses. I've noticed that people used to make excuses for their websites, for their interface. And they'd say, you know, we know it's not ideal, but you just got to do these six different things. And then you're there. And then, then you get to the good bit. Now, like the, the base standard is no code. Like if, if you have to do anything other than push buttons with your thumb, it's not good enough. And people, people are acknowledging that. Well, because we have more people, the early guys, you know, you have that, that curve, right? You have this gap of yeah. where you have early adopters and the early, early adopters, adopters don't care. Yeah. They'll, they'll jump through all the hoops you make them, right? They love yeah. your product. They'll do it. We're now we're bringing on, we're coming out of the early majority or the early minority yeah. into the early majority. And so this early majority doesn't really know. They just heard about it from friends and, and you want their first experience. It really can't be better anywhere else than it can be on Hedera. And so the opportunity to build things on Hedera that can't exist anywhere else because of all the reasons we're talking about need to manifest in great user experience. That's why I was talking this morning and we might be getting off topic a little bit here. So bring we me, are back. A little bit. You're a, bring you're me back on I the road. <laughs> Well, let's do that then. Let's do that then. So yeah, because um, we, we we could talk all day. We could talk and, and all day. You and I. We, love we've it. got like fourteen or fifteen people in this video, so like I Move can't along. do fifteen Move hours. Along. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. We, but but for anyone interested, I am definitely John and I are going to meet up in real life, and we're going to have like a proper session. Okay? Absolutely. Looking and we're, forward and we're gonna, to it. We're going to talk about everything. Right over to 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 Hadira Token Server. So you've got the BSL. Uh, token. I'm just sorry. I'm just looking off screen at my other monitor. Yep. So fully diluted valuation, 16.7 million pounds, um, 34,000 pounds, 24 hour trading volume, which is amazing. Total supply only 10 billion. Why? No. Why so, so no, no. So the total supply is 20 billion on both chains. Okay. Oh. So 20 billion on both chains. Um, and I don't know about those other numbers because I don't deal in real money. We deal in fake yeah. US dollars. Over here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, uh, so the uh the um where's the other total, 10 billion though? yeah the other so there's two you know we we're on both chains so before it was 10 billion on bnb 10 billion on eth now it's 10 billion on hedera 10 billion on ethereum so 20 billion total but there's a recent push that we're waiting on the vote uh, mechanism to get turned on for where the the entire two 20 billion is going to get moved to hedera so if you look at the token right now we actually gave it a max mint size of 20 billion to account yeah. for the future move of uh of uh, ethereum tokens which it looks like it's going to happen so you know the idea is that once that move happens the 20 billion would only exist on hedera and then we would utilize mechanisms you know potentially hashport um, but but definitely the opportunity to build liquidity um, not by minting more tokens on ethereum but we think probably a better mechanism than a bridge would be to burn tokens on the Hedera side and mint them because you you lose the the risk of the double spend when you yes. do that, right? Yes. And then you can mint a middleware token um, that doesn't have access to liquidity. Like that's the thing that you want to do is not have access to liquidity with the bridge token. And yes. so so we've kind of come up with a unique solution to doing that. Um, and we're going to make it all smart contracts so that if anybody else wants to build on top of it or go build a similar kind of mechanism, they can. So it's it open source. It open sources the building and the interactivity of the token, right? Um, yeah. That's one, one of the big things. So 20 billion tokens on both chains right now, 10 and 10. Um, and then we also burned uh, on both chains the uh 5 billion total so there's a total um i guess if you want to call it outstanding number of tokens is 15 billion because two and a half and two and a half on the old chains were burned and will never come back okay got it um so i'm just looking at this and this is really interesting and i, I want to get your view on this so on november the 13th the token price was let's assume pounds and dollars are the same thing four noughts seven one Okay, four noughts seven one, and today two noughts one, middle, middle or, or two noughts two in in dollars. Can you, and literally in three days, the price just went parabolic. Do you know what caused that? Do you have any idea? Was it the wider market? Was it something you did? Was there an announcement there? That's on November thirteenth. No, the low the low was on November third on November 9th. 
the, the you went parabolic on now was it was it that jan 26th yeah that was that was the hedera migration so right. I think it was just more people having access to the uh, the utility of the token, wanted to get access to the utility of the token. Yeah. Um, you know, the the mechanism, the only mechanism we know of that's decentralized and allows the the uh, token to self regulate are the dexes. So we yeah. put it on we put it on saucer swap dex, and you know it, the outcome is the outcome. I think it would be primarily driven though by the um, the migration and the opening up of the DAO to a new token holder base is, is yeah. what I would attribute that to. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Yeah, and it's, and it's, you know, it, it, uh, it made quite a, quite a big jump in the number of token holders. Um, and that, that, uh, amount of token holders has actually stayed the, the amount of people that still hold the token from that migration is actually still quite high. So, right. it, yeah, so, so we like it. We, we think that it shows the, uh, the DAO, Kind of the participation of the DAO. I think the the community when um, the whole Hedera, uh, the H bar migration of a couple hundred more K in lending pool came over to Hedera um, is now going to be staked. That was also something that I think uh, confirmed kind of the the operational aspects of the DAO and how it's functioning. But yes, it's um, we we think that the move to Hedera has been um, really especially when we start talking about the staking and the mechanism for the staking that's about to release. Yeah. We already knew that doing that on Ethereum and you could do it on Binance, but it's, it's kind of better. There's a lot more mechanism. We were initially looking at, um, you know, some other L2s, but um, w as soon as, you know, HTS hasn't been around for, for six years, right? It's, a, it's in the realm of things. It's a rather new feature. And so yeah. as soon as HTS hit the market, we immediately started planning for, because if we were just going to move smart contracts only, right, that, that wasn't as compelling a case. And HCS, while valuable in our ecosystem generally, um, for the token, component right so you gotta you gotta remember we're building lots of stuff on chain on hedera we're talking about the bsl token the bank social token and the dow component right now right yeah. so so yeah. many other things and when we when we uh when we figured out hts and when we looked at all the built-in features um you know frankly we've been working uh quite extensively with uh, the swirls labs teams and uh, they've been they've been great in helping us um enhance the sdks for features that are, um, you know, that we have kind of hit the limit of, or not, I don't want to say hit the limit of, but that have maybe opened up some new types of potential um, implementations of the SDK, right? So not what, necessarily on-chain, the software development kit. Yeah. So, so Swirls Labs builds the software development kit for Hedera. And that's not exactly to mean that uh, it changes on-chain mechanisms right it's really more about this middleware layer that makes hedera so easy to integrate with and that's one of the things that swirled labs that that software development kit it's basically i think four or five languages pre-built code that instead of having to know how to write a solidity contract or you know go whatever whatever language it's in you know uh, cardano's and haskell which i don't even know how many freaking haskell programmers are in the world maybe kevin over here does but i i don't i'm sure it's not as many as a lot of the other languages out there maybe as many as lisp kevin oh it's growing okay so it's growing but um you know uh they you know it's made very easy where if you look at how enterprise development tends to swing it tends to be these open protocols for communication. So the industry generally recognizes a method for talking, right? So yeah. say, 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 you know, uh, um, in banking, they're using REST with JSON and it's, it's FDX or it's some other payload spec. Uh, you know, as a developer, I just pull in those SDKs and then I might have nuances of how I deal with that person or that person, but I don't want to have to go maintain a whole freaking new code base that I've got to fork and hack up or maybe make my own, right? And do my yeah. and do my own things. And so that speeds up development significantly. So the addition of an HTS token and the addition of the SDK a couple years back made it possible for a whole world of opportunities to be built on Adara. And that's when we knew that the HTS token and the ability to not just, because what we were going to originally do is do our staking only on Hedera. 
So we were going to build a bridge mechanism to get the benefits of the, the staking, but that was going to be only for uh, tracking much, much like some of the other uh, communities do with HCS. You can kind of track yeah. uh, different mechanisms. Um, but we didn't think that was the most decentralized way to do it. Um, and, and, you know, until HTS came out, that's when it became clear that Hedera was the place for the entire token ecosystem to live. Yeah. Okay. Um, so do you think that, so currently we're at, uh, as I said, today we're at two zero two dollars at uh, cent. Um, do you think that represents fair value for BSL? So I don't know. I don't know about pricing. What I do know is that the way the DAO is structured, right, with the lending pool and the components of the lending pool and the way that works and the staking mechanisms and it being on Hedera, what I what I can tell you is that the modeling for this is such that um, you have lenders out there that are lending that are lending money, right? And those those get to be 15, 20, 50, 100 million dollar pools. Um, and those pools, um, you know, if we look at it from the token trading mechanism standpoint, right, we can kind of extrapolate out how much token trading would need to occur on the decks, resulting in how much to the, the, the social lending pool, the Dow lending pool, and could thus kind of build a model that would show where where that would go but it's really more about it's it's 100 percent about dow participation participating in the voting network the opportunity to be a part of that and then to drive how the dow comes to the uh the use of the lending pool the um and then all the benefits of that staking mechanism that come out of that lending pool as it, it gets utilized in different forms and formats so so what you're saying is if there's enough community uh, uh participation and if the lending pools are large enough, circa 50, 75, 100 million, um, then that you believe that then the token must reflect the value that is within those DAOs and within those pools. Is that correct? I, I think just by, yeah, if we looked at a mathematical equation, that would probably be the, the uh, mathematical equation that would make the most sense to look at it from uh, any, anything else. You know, I'm trying to approach it from as logical a standpoint as possible. Anything yeah. else is complete speculation. And, and sure. um, you know, um, I don't think people, uh, um, you know, from the perspective of using the Dow mechanism, it really can drive to be, I mean, there's even a mechanism in it to where if the Dow holders want to dis dismember and take a, take their a pro proportionate share back of the lending pool, that's even a, a mechanism built in. So it's more about participation in a novel network, a Dow that yeah. is, is riding alongside credit unions uh, that's being implemented in credit, that credit unions are actually like, wow, this is really cool. This is an exciting thing, right? Yeah. Um, that's really what, the, the bank social DAO, the bank social token, and the ecosystem of the HTS token are mostly about, and I would say um, entirely about, because really that's the that's the novelty. That's what you're accessing when you get the token. Everything else is just kind of what the community decides to build. Yeah. So it's liquidity through utility, basically, is, is, is what you're saying, is, is what's going to reflect, be reflecting the price. But what can you, have you done that maths? What does 100 mil uh lending pool what's I, that look frankly like? until frankly until you asked me about this i had not even thought about that equation i just came up with it on the fly so really? i don't have a i did i did so i don't have a um i'm sure psychologically subconsciously that's been brewing around yeah and you're really the only person that you can go back and listen to all all my talks i don't think i've ever come up with that descriptor so thank you for helping me think through that this morning. Well, you're very welcome. That's part of the reason I'm here. Um, so, so, well, best guess. You've got, you've got, you must have got feelings. You know what you're doing. You, you, you know your company. I know you know what you're doing incredibly well. What do, you know? What does that, what does that translate to? If you can get to that kind of utility, if you can get that kind of lempool, 100 mil plus, what, what, what would you imagine? Best guess. This is oh not man, I, I, have no, I have no idea. I have no idea. I have, I have. Okay. It, it, anything that I would say would be um, bad math. Okay. I like Fine. to say that I'm good at, at good at small number math in my head when it yeah. starts getting to be hundreds of millions and derivatives of numbers and 
you know. Um, You'd be surprised how many businesses I speak to are built on bad maths. Um. <laughs> exactly, which is why I don't like to indicate that I'm one of those people that thinks <laughs> thinks through things with bad math. <laughs> Especially when you're in a, in a room full of people. Okay, fair enough. That's fine. Okay, so we we um yeah we've got a very limited time here because and I but I do love talking to you, John, because you know what you're talking about. You, you're dead honest, uh, and your 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 um, serious business and fun all wrapped up into one. And I really that's that. exactly yeah. the same reason why I love you. It's great. Yeah, oh, well, that's <laughs> looking good. at a mirror of each other. Okay, so um I I I think. I think I've tried to ask you in as many different ways as I can for a price prediction, but it doesn't look like I'm going to get one of those out of you. Um, so let's, so let's, as a, as a final kind of wrap up, you're not allowed to choose your own token and you can either put them in order, but you don't have to. What are your top three other HTS tokens? <laughs> okay. There are, there are a lot of them. Okay. There are. Um, and, and there really are, you know, have you ever, have you oh, ever no, I know. Yes, have you yes, looked at the list? Yeah. Yes. We, I mean, look, we, we have a wallet. We have all of them are usable in our wallet. We've seen yeah, the yeah, list. We yeah, know, we know what it looks like. Um, so, so, okay. No specific order. I think these are cool. Okay. Just because I think they're cool. Um, you know, always the DEX tokens are cool. So Sauce, H Suite, yeah. you know, those are cool just because of what they enable, right? Through liquidity provider yeah. to yeah, their yeah, providers. Yeah. Um, so I think those are all very valuable to the network and valuable to the communities that they support. Um, outside of those, um, no, you could, John, you've got to pick three. So pick three and name uh, them. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I like karate. I think karate yeah. is really cool. It's fun. Good choice. Um, I like I like Dovu. I think that um, they've got some. Um, I think there's a lot of room for growth in that, uh, just because I think um, governments will get more sophisticated in the sourcing and provenance of where um, carbon credits come from, and and even to the point to where. Um, a Hyundai may pay more for a carbon credit with a X source versus a, a Y source. Yes. Okay. So I think a lot of room to grow there. I like that one. Um, okay. And, I, and that's not me room. saying that Dovu's got it figured out and I'm endorsing them as no, the guys no, 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 do no. it. Uh, by the uh, way, we, we, we've been through, because uh, presumably people are watching this, I've been watching a few of them. So I've already set the stage for this is not financial advice. John's not a wizard. He can't see the future. This is just a one man's personal opinion of which ones he likes, right? So we've got karate. We've got Dovu, which is very popular, by the way. A lot of people pick Dovu. And what's your third? Hmm. It's got to be a meat, no? You know, I see so much of Grelf that I'm just going to go ahead and say for right now, Grelf. Um, He's so funny, you know. You should watch. You should definitely watch the interview on this. On this I will. Uh, I definitely will. He, because I don't know, I've never seen him before in the community. So, but he's quite, he's quite involved, you know. Well, he is, and he's got. I mean, the the you know, when it comes to meme coins, the most, the hardest thing to do is break through, break yeah. through the noise of everything else, because you're a meme coin, and you yeah. and you have you have no nothing, no utility, right? You're a meme coin, and he's been able to break through in a sustained way, and I think that's impressive when it comes to meme coins. So, from a meme coin perspective, that to me is kind of. Um, you know, if I if I had to pick one, that's the one that I'd pick. Yeah. Damn I, you for making me only pick three, Max. I see what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There, there you go, John. Uh, everybody, those are John's uh, favorite price prediction picks. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, is there anything? Is there anything you wanna you wanna say to the community while we, while we're together? Is there anything you wanna leave us with? Or do you think we've pretty much? I know there's a lot more to cover. Just that I, just that we, we love you, all of you, um, for being so involved in making these new kind of social economies what they can be. Um, it doesn't happen without the community. And um, thank you all, all the love and power to all of you. Just actually on that point, I, I, I meant to ask this earlier, and I'm sorry if this has been quite a off the, off the cuff uh, interview, but I, I do want to. I'm, I'm a little bit frustrated because there isn't too much that we can do here in the uk and i presumably across europe with bank social at the moment is that gonna is that gonna change you, because yeah it's, so it's so best, uh, really? so yeah actually um we are about to launch in a lot more jurisdictions as far as on ramp for the token all of the staking is going to be available as soon as that comes out 
Of yeah. course, the bank social wallet is available in your jurisdiction, and that's coming out with quite a few new, um, really great updates. I won't go into those, uh, but you're going to really love those. So, yeah, the I think the thing that's been missing for the most part is the on ramp to BSL, yes. and so that's a we we are probably days away from that being available in uh, in. Um, not just our wallet, by the way. So we 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 want to you know maintain the wallet agnostic. I can say that you know some of our features will be wallet uh, exclusive to our wallet, um, just more like differentiators. But generally for the token, uh, we want everybody in the in the uh, community to participate in the BSL token and the benefits of that. Um, and so we we um, we do have that rolling out. So it's a little bit of alpha for you right there. Okay, brilliant. John, thank you so much for your time. It's uh, always a pleasure, never a chore. Thanks so much, Max. I love it. It's always uh, fun talking. Thanks. Bye. And on to the next one. So now, up with me, I have the absolute pleasure of being joined by Dan Bulba of the Bull Token. How are you, Dan? All right? I'm good. Thank you very much. And hello to everyone watching. And appreciate your time, Max. Really do appreciate it. Yeah, not 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 at all. It's quite it's quite nice actually to be speaking to a fellow Brit because we're very rare. We we seem to be dominated by the Americans in the in the crypto market. Do you think that's has that been your experience? Definitely, yeah. Um, to be honest, I don't really know many British people. I know there's a few guys on Hedera who are who are British, but as you, as you say, it is a fairly American market, isn't it? Currently, so there's not many Brits around. So yeah, Respect it is indeed British. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got to stick together. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so, so you're the. Is it just yourself, or are you the? Are you the founder? How would you describe yourself with the Bulbar uh, meme coin? So, there's two founders. Um, I'm one of them, and James is the other one, aka Silver on Twitter. And yeah, we're we're friends in real life, and we've been discussing this for a long time. Um, and we launched in July 2023. And we were talking about launching a, a meme coin prior to that for months and whether it was actually a good idea. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's been in the works for a long time, probably a year. And, yeah, we launched in July 2023 and it's just grown beyond our initial plans, really. And it's just tumbleweeded into a massive thing now. It's, it's huge. So, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of it. And it's been a lot of work. We'll yeah, that. I bet. So, 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 just on that, then, just before we kind of get into the token itself, if anybody's watching this and they're considering um, starting their own token, what what's that process been like for you? What what would you recommend? Plan it, and whatever plan you have won't work. Basically, so it doesn't matter how well you plan it and how well you think out, and you have to plan for every single scenario and then some, and then it's something else will still. It's not something you can just make in your hash pack wallet and release and then go, there you go, guys, buy it. You need to build the community. You need to build your brand. And the community is the most important thing because without the community, uh, we are nothing, really. We just sat there stagnant on Saucer Swap with a, um, an LP doing nothing. So, yeah, it's, okay, it's, and important, so it's important. So, so yeah, of course, yeah, it's a, it's a community-centric uh, endeavor. So you're sat there with no one in your discord or your group or, or wherever it may be how, how do you get that how do you build that following how do you build that community how did you do so it? we have been in hbar for a long time i myself personally have been a holder for a very long time but before source of swap before hashpack i was in and out of hbar and when i joined the community probably in 2022 just at the start of covid i would say is when i started being an active community member on twitter so we already knew quite a lot of people. So our core community of friends, I would say, on, on Hedera were, were, were the, the boons. So we actually formed a council with those guys and they helped us market ball. And our first sort of idea to market it properly is what everyone is doing now is airdrops. So we made an NFT called the Ball VIP Pass and we promised to airdrop 2 billion coins over a period of six months. 12 airdrops, so once every two weeks. And we've since concluded that. So our final airdrop is this coming Friday, and that will equate to 2 billion dropped in total within over six months. It's been um, it's been epic, man, to be honest. Like, And I'm, I'm kind of glad the airdrop side's o- over and done with. So, yeah. Right, okay, yeah, I can tell that expression on your face. You're looking forward to the end of that. Yeah, um, yeah, so you yeah. You mentioned that have a plan, and, and, but be 
but but be prepared to pivot or you know sort of change it because it will get changed for you. Can you can you allude on that a bit? What what kind of issues have you hit? What struggles have you had? Um, it's just struggles with the. Uh, I'm just I'm just trying to think. So with the NFT side, we didn't really plan that out properly. Um, it could have. I, I wouldn't say we didn't plan it out properly. Is it, it could have gone better. Um, you know, like the price was starting to pump on H bar, and we had made our white paper saying it was this price. And when we had done that, it worked out like twenty five dollars an NFT. And obviously, with the price going up, we had to drop it again, and we kept dropping it. And in the end, it was just a bit of a mess on that side. So, and we, we've only minted that one phase of our N- NFT um, bullish balls now, and we're planning our next phase. But we really want to make, we want to wait for the market conditions to to better, because. Um, I don't feel now is the right time to be doing the NFT side because the focus is on the tokens now. Uh, the focus is on DeFi. So, yeah, and we're hoping to use ball to mint with next time. So any ball that um, people have, they can mint our NFTs and we'll burn that ball as well. We're not going to keep it. Um, so we're going to make our token more deflationary than it already is. Um, yeah, so... Um, I've kind of gone off a bit there, haven't I, mate? <laughs> but, hey, don't worry. Uh, so you price. So just... what you're saying essentially is that you priced your NFTs for sale in in H bar rather than in fiat. So that um, yeah. what that led to was that if the price went higher, you had to drop the price, drop the amount of H bar to keep the price the same. Is that what you're saying, effectively? That's it. Yeah. So we yeah. wanted to keep it in US dollar value that like the whole time throughout. And in the end, it was just the wrong time to launch our NFT project, I would say. But it's it's turned out all right, you know. Um, I'm I'm more than happy with how it's gone now, and we can learn from that because until you've done something, you don't learn. Um, I'm not I'm not one to sort of say, and you know, everything's gone perfectly, but everything has turned out really well now, and we are extremely happy with how it's progressing. So, but. You, you, you can't plan for some stuff it's just impossible like there's always something where the community aren't quite happy with it um that's why our council is really helpful in that sense because we've got 10 people in our council and we can go to them and say what are we doing wrong how can we change it so and that's it and we try and pivot as much as we can um even though we have a plan but i do like to pivot on that so no, that's important. I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. It's good to have a plan, but you've also got to be ready to respond to an ever-evolving um, uh, situation. So that's that's really important, and it's also good that you've got those ten people that you can trust and that you can go to and get advice and feedback from, and they can act as the bridge between you and and, and the community, presumably, um, and and help you as a soundboard. So what's so is is um, bull? Is it a mean coin in the truest sense in that it offers no utility and it is just a speculative asset. It's good fun. And that's it. I mean, I was having a chat with Grelf and he, he was, he was very much of that camp. He was saying, look, this is a mean coin. There will be no utility. That's it. Take it or leave it. Uh, where does bull sit in, in this sort of spectrum of mean coin like Grelf all the way down at one end and then karate combat token at the other. Yeah, we are very much like Grelf in that sense. We're not promising any like u- utility tied to it. I mean, we we have a farm on Saucer Swap, and people can go in and create a liquidity pair and earn interest on that. They earn a an APR paid out by Saucer Swap. Um, but we we don't really we're not going to really say that we're going to be doing anything else with with that coin because um, well we can't really. It's just it. Tumbleweed into thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. If we wanted to do anything serious with it, like create a DAP or something, it's some. It's not something we would rule out, um, but it's something that we're not doing that currently. We need to focus on building our community first, and onboarding people to Hedera is a really important thing for us as well. Um, I've been in crypto for six years, and I've tried all the layer ones. Starting off on ETH, I used to mine ETH. I still mine. Bitcoin and Casper. I've got a little mining rig in my garage that's solar powered. Um, so, but we've stuck on Hedera because we love it. It's fixed transaction fees and it's fast. That's it. Um, so, yeah, onboarding people is really important to us as well. Definitely. Uh, that, that's really cool. Um, so, look, looking at the token, then you have 44 billion total supply. Is that hard cap? No, no yeah, hard caps, no keys. Yeah, nothing. We can't change that. Um, we can burn supply using DaVinci Graph. So, that's basically not burnt though, because we don't have keys. It's locked in a wallet, and the wallet is uh, 
locked in a contract for a hundred years or something like that. So unless I live to 138, um, <laughs> I, can't, I can't touch those those ball tokens. So yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's good. And you you did say that with the with the NFT and the drops and the burns that it's going to be even more deflationary. What do you mean by that? How how deflationary is it? What's your plans? We've burnt so far 7.69% off the top of my head. Um, yeah, so we've burnt 3.3 billion ish. And with our NFTs, if we could get another billion from our NFT sales, which you know does have US dollar value, and we can burn that and take our burnt supply up to 4 billion, then we're burning what well, 4.4 billion would be 10%. And that's what we're hoping to do. But with the Da Vinci Graph tools, they're amazing at the moment. We've also got a vested contract of ball coin that we decided to lock up for a year because we just don't need it yet. Um, we know we are looking at to create some more liquidity pools with future projects. I can't really talk much about that yet, but some of them are quite serious. So we have a treasury wallet with a small, a relatively small amount in at the moment and the rest is vested. And if we can't find a use for those other tokens locked up in a year, we will burn them as well. So wow. <laughs> it, it could end up being 20%. Wow. So just explain to people who aren't too sure what you just said there. So effectively, what you're saying is you have some tokens there. Now, as the creators of this project, there's nothing stopping you dumping them, selling them on the market. But to prove yep. that that's not your intention and that you're here for at least a year, then you lock those tokens <laughs> up to prove to people yep. that you're not going to be dumping them on the market. Is that that's basically it. what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, and everyone can go and see those contracts. They're on the DaVinci Graph site. So you just go to token or liquidity pool lockups are our liquidity pools locked up as well. Um, they can go and have a look on their website and see our vested tokens. And it's something like $60,000 worth of vested tokens now. So, wow. um, and with our burn token, that's about $33,000 that, that we've burnt. So yeah, it's quite a large amount of money that we've just basically thrown away in that sense. But um, we wanted people to be confident in our project. And and I think we have gone about it the right way with some of the other stuff we've done with KYC and Docs with Big Tiny Brands. We're one of the only mean projects to have done that, to my knowledge, on Hedera. So the right people know my address. So um, I can't mess this up, Max. Um, yeah, I, I take this seriously. This is a business to me. I run a business in real life. And I take this just as seriously because <clears throat> people's money are involved and I don't want to mess this up. I, I, you know, I lost money on Luna a couple of years ago, and it was um, it tears your heart out when you lose big chunks of money, and I don't want that to happen. Obviously, the coin trades, it goes up and down. People buy, people sell. We have no control on that. So, yeah, the rest is out, out of our hands, really, in that sense. Yeah. It's really good to hear, and I think that you've done everything reasonably practicable to demonstrate to the community that you're a legitimate uh, business and that you are looking for, you know, you're, you, 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 you've got the most reason to to be um invested in and trusted in the meme coin yeah. space which i think is you know is um it's commendable you're just looking at the price then so we're currently what's the price today do you know you must know what is it five zero seven it was yeah it was down a little bit today we had a bit of a down sale a but yeah, today, it's, yeah it's still up on the month and it's up on the year quite well we outperformed source um you know for a vast majority of of, of this year already so um wow. i think it was due a li little bit of a pullback but um, yeah, our liquidity at the moment, let's just have a look. I think it was over about $130,000 all in. To total yeah, uh, fully diluted, uh, valuation at the moment is £300,000. Yep. So more like $410,000 uh, with a 24 trading uh, vol of volume of $6,500, which yep. is respectable. Um, does that represent good value for bull token or where where do you see it being where would you uh, you personally i mean i understand that people understand watching my stuff that this is not financial advice this is your personal yeah. opinion where, where would you like to see it what's the dream where would you like to see it well i do think that some of the other coins um like source in and growth they've got massive like market caps now in in comparison to some of us um which are sort of lagging behind a little bit so uh, ideally i i do think there's more value in our coin and um and there's more room to to grow our project. We've got plans. Uh, we're not stopping here. We've just got our source of swap farm. We've been listed in C14 um, on ramp in Hashpack. So I had a good uh, meeting so people can go and buy ball with Fiat now. Um, we have default listing on source of swap. Um, yeah, we've basically done done all of that CoinGecko listing. We've partnered with other projects. So 
yeah, I'm just, um, we just have to sort of carry on, build our community and in, most importantly, a build trust. Cause I think with, with um, a project like Grelf, I'm going to use them as an example is they've been around for a long time and people trust them. So um, it's just sort of, you know, that's why I come on your show um, because I wanted people to see me and see I'm not some, you know, just some random dude on the internet who's made a coin um, and that I actually do know what, what I'm doing <laughs> to a certain extent. <laughs> so, yeah, I just, you know, our price is sort of fair price at the moment, I would say. Um, it's had some good buys over the last month. And now would be a fairly okay time to get in, I would say, um, because there is definitely room to grow. I mean, our market cap hit half a million dollars a couple of weeks ago, and it obviously had a bit of a retrace because we was up um, about 200% on, on the month. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's just it's just playing, wow. our, playing our cards right, isn't it, really? Those are, those are really impressive numbers because I think sometimes people don't realise that some, some people I've spoken to um, who aren't necessarily... Uh, web3 or crypto natives they yeah. they see the price and don't appreciate that you can still have fantastic growth and fantastic yeah. um yeah. price action increases uh decreases too but you can have those massive increases just it's the same difference whether it's whether it, it goes from a pound to ten pound or whether it goes from five one to three one the exactly. increase is relatively the same yeah yeah that's like something i had to um explain to my partner to my to my to my wife that um it, it doesn't matter if the token's a thousand dollars or it's got like five zeros before that if it goes up 10 percent, it goes up 10 percent. so and if it loses a zero it loses a zero um and either one can do exactly the same um it's just based on the supply and um the amount of volume you get really and, and the buys just add to the uh, liquidity pool and they've hopefully everyone's happy um you can see on deck screener which is a brilliant tool. If anyone is in DeFi, go on Deck Screener. You can see everyone's PL, so everyone's profit and loss. And some people have made several thousand dollars on our coin. And um, I love to see that. Um, people have have made money. So I'm I'm happy <laughs> in Good. that sense. Good. <laughs> and is this a long-term project for you? For you personally, I mean, are you going to be with this project for a long time, do you think? Yes, definitely. Um, I feel like I have a massive responsibility now and it is a lot of pressure on your shoulders. Um, if it was easy, everyone would do it, but it's not easy. You know, it's not just making a, a like a shit coin. I'm going to, sorry if I'm swearing and sticking right. it in your wallet and then just releasing it to the wild. It doesn't work like that. Um, you know, we've really put in some time into this project and I've learned a lot on the NFT side. Even though I've been in crypto a long time, I'd never set up a liquidity pool myself. I'd always just put money into a uh, liquidity pool. So I learned how to, to how to do that side of things. And with the NFTs and dealing with hash packs, brilliant, brilliant. Without that wallet, we'd you know doing our airdrops and stuff like that with it now. It's it's so handy. It really is. Really is handy. So brilliant. yeah, oh, that's it's good to hear. And and it, and it seems to be getting easier as well. The user interfaces, the the yeah. interoperability. Everything seems to be getting easier and easier. We still got, I believe, for Web two customers, we've still got a long way to go, but it's yeah. certainly getting yeah. easier. And and I mean, on the weekly, things are getting easier. Yeah. I mean, look at, yeah. look at the likes of Galaxy and and Karate Combat. I mean, their apps yeah. are seamless, aren't they? And their apps great fun as well. Like the Karate Combat is just you know you, you can stick on a bet and it's done. <laughs> you yeah. don't have to worry about it. It is brilliant, yeah, man. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. a couple yeah. of clicks, it's done. Yeah, it's, it's it done. is fantastic. This is just the beginning, I believe. Yeah. And, I, and okay. I do think Hedera has does have the edge on the others. Um, I, I have tried all, all of the layer layer ones. I've, I've tried all of them. And um, I was stuck between Phantom and AVAX for a long time. And they've got brilliant communities. And the DeFi on AVAX is amazing. And if Hedera can grow like that, then wow, we're all in for a, a pleasant treat. Um, I'm, I'm hoping for anyway. <laughs> Okay, so a quick question. Um, yep. If you're not allowed to pick your own, what are your, and you can put them in order, but you don't have to if you don't want to, what are your favourite okay. three other HTS tokens? Um, Source. I hold um, Source is probably my biggest in my portfolio at the moment on my Hedera side. Um, I love Source. Um, I just think it is, the, it is the number one DEX, isn't it, really? And They've been really kind to us, giving us the default votes and allowing us to sort of become part of the community. Um, Dovu, 
I quite like Dovu. I missed out on this massive pump recently, and I'll, I am looking to add more. So please sell some Dovu, and I'll buy it. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, well, ball. Um, I've actually bought a lot of my own ball, so I have invested in my choose, own product. You can't choose your own. You can't choose your own. I can't choose. You, okay. Um, so you've got sauce. You've got Dovu. One more, not ball. One more. Okay. Um, let me just have a look. I'm just trying to think, really. I don't really... There's hash, there's hash coming out with Hashpack, which people seem very excited about. There's uh, yes. Lehman Coin, Unlucky, H-Suite, um, Jam with Tune FM. Um, da Vinci Coin, I totally forgot about that. I've just uh, yeah. participated in their pre-sale. So I had the NFTs and I was able to get a pre-sale for that. So Da Vinci Coin I'm looking for and, of course, Pack Coin. I think that's going to yeah. be massive. Like, if that yeah. Pack Coin does, does well... Um, that will bring people to Hedera. And uh, people really underestimate how powerful um, that wallet can be. And, and meme, meme, meme coins, they bring people in. They, they do bring people in. They, they make so much noise. And if people can see price action, they want in, don't they? So yes. I, I do think, yeah, I, I think Pack Token is going to be massive. Like probably the biggest one yet, I would say. I, th I, th I think so too. And I've actually got a chat with Hashpack about exactly that uh, later yeah. today. So I'm very much looking forward to, to that one. That'll be an interesting conversation indeed. Yeah, definitely. And I am excited for it. I'm just sort of waiting on their tweets now and seeing how I can position myself for it now. <laughs> Everybody's hanging on every word. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's funny. <laughs> so is there anything else as we start to wrap up now, Dan? Is there anything else you want to just say to the community before we go? Um, no, not not really. Just that we are still here. Um, obviously, we've we've climbed some massive mountains and we've conquered we've conquered them. We've got our farm. We've got our default list in. We are primed now. We're ready. We're rocking. We're working on our next steps. Um, we are looking at you know working with some more projects as well. Definitely, we have um, partnerships already in place. One with Da Vinci, Kabila, our, our NFT projects. Um, so anyone can take. Our NFTs with a CWAS lens trait and go and get 7% off the Kabila uh, content creator platform. Um, so thank you, Manu, for that. Manu, also, we, we worked with Manu because uh, Kabila did our art for our NFT project. So we work closely with Manu and um, I've made really good friends with the Kabila team. Um, yeah, nice. we're, yes. we're just we're just working hard, man. We're, we're figuring out the next steps and planning our next mint phase carefully. And I want to thank everyone who's is stuck with us and had the patience and, you know, been in our lows and been in our highs. So, you know, people have been there right from the start. And that's just amazing. It really is. So, yeah. That's nice you. to have people go on the whole journey with you. That's amazing. Yeah, and where do people it. go if they want to know more about a bull? Have you got a website yet? Yes. Yes, we have. Um, bullbarcoin.xyz. And they can join up our Discord as well. If you go onto our Twitter, all of our links are there. And you'll be able to follow up follow wherever you like really but our main community is probably in our discord server now it's quite an active community in there and all of our links and information and i'm always in there to answer any questions if you want to jump on a video call with me more than welcome i will jump on a call with anyone so yeah more than be more careful than that be careful, yeah. very careful in that my friends um, there might okay, be some guys, caveats put... right. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll put an asterisk on there top of the screen. So I'll put links in the description below, of course, for everything that Dan's just touched on there, including their Discord. So if people want to check that out, just have a look at the links in the description below. Dan, thank you so much for your time. I think you're a real uh, gent. You seem you seem really legit. And I, I, I wish you all the success with your project. And I might even be getting involved myself. I might buy some more. <laughs> all right, awesome. Thanks, Max. Appreciate Perfect. it. All right. Take care, buddy. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, next up, we have the absolute pleasure of being with Joey from Earthlings Lands. How are you, Joey? Doing well, Max. How are you? Living the dream. Thank you very much. Um, so, Joey, you are described as the, not officially, but the kind of, in, in practical terms, you are the chief revenue officer for Earthlings Lands. But you started as a community member. Is that right? Yes, yes. Um, right when Patrick and Marcel launched the white paper before they had the first token offering, which is the founder's card. I read through it and commented to Patrick in their Discord. I think there were maybe fewer than 100 people in the Discord at that time. Um, I, I made some comments to Patrick and he asked me for an interview. So we hit it off. I got involved with the Discord. One thing led to another and here we are today. 
So it just got out of hand. <laughs> yes, yeah, quickly, quickly it did. <laughs> Quickly escalated. But how encouraging is that, though, that it just goes to show people if you get involved, even as a community member, you never know where that journey might take you. And, and you're living proof of that. So for people who aren't familiar, can you just explain briefly what Earthling land, Earthlings Land is, please? Yes, absolutely. So the, the concept started as a metaverse with with games in it, um, as a lot of metaverses do. And it quickly turned into a gaming metaverse, meaning that the metaverse will happen organically um, as the game develops. We're starting with some mobile games, probably three of those before we launch the full version of Earthlings Land. So we'll have quests, challenges, community events, racing games. Uh, so as those grow and people participate in all or portions of that, the metaverse side of it will organically happen. So we're a gaming company that is creating a gaming metaverse called Earthlings Land. Okay. And so, of course, this video is is a special about Hedera Token Service and all of the different weird, wonderful, wacky, and and you know, really fantastic um, token projects or tokens on Hedera from meme coins all the way up to serious businesses that happen to have a token that facilitates their business. So where will this sit in the, in this? I'm guessing you're going to be at the sort of, you're going to be one of the latter. You're, you're a serious business with that happens to have a token. Is that correct? Very much so. Um, our in-game token, uh, that will be, um, on chain, so to speak is called steam and it is the lifeblood of earthlings. It is, how you pay for quest. It's how you purchase your NFTs. Um, it is uh, the prizes that will be rewarded for winning contests and games. Um, we'll have people that hold in real life businesses in the Earthlings metaverse, and you'll be able to purchase their goods through Steam. So it is an absolute necessity for Earthlings. It is it is what everything is driven on the Web3 side of the game is. Okay, and can you obviously it's not live quite yet. So, but it's going it's coming live soon. Is that correct? Have you got a date in mind yet? Uh, that's correct. We're hoping uh, for mid early mid April. I'll say, um, probably giving away more than I should there, but but yes, um, right now. Uh, we have allowed people access to PH Steam, which simply means placeholder Steam. Um, so all of those, when we go live, will be converted. You'll be able to go and convert those to Steam. Uh, so we are already putting the token into the hands of community. Um, as people have seen with our uh, airdrop, it's about to start going out to all HBAR holders that participate. Okay, and how do people do that? How do they participate? Is it community members in general? Is it people who hold the NFT? How, how do the people get involved? It's anyone that has a Hedera wallet and can receive NFTs and associate tokens. Uh, right now, our promotion, if you go to earthlings.land on X and look at our past videos, there are three tokens to associate. It's our bag holder NFT. It's our PH theme and it is our Steam token. Everyone is associating those now in anticipation of four airdrops. We'll have an airdrop in February, March, April, and May. Those airdrops will be divided equally amongst all of the HBAR that are held in the wallets of people that have associated and received our bag holder NFT. So it's pretty simple. Find the video, associate those three tokens, and wait. Have HBAR in the same wallet, and you're going to get some PH theme and eventually Steam. Okay, guys, what I'll do, I'll put some links in the description below, as always, so that you can link straight to those those videos, those tweets, but also the guy's website and their, their X uh, homepage as well, just to make it a lot easier for you. So just check out the description below, and all that information under the Earthlings land section will be there for you. So how many, can you talk a little bit about the tokenomics? I mean, this should be right your bag because, uh, you know, you are you are the numbers man. Um, is there a, you know, what's is there a cap supply? Is it infinite? What's, what's the deal? Yeah, so we will have 1 billion tokens. And the purpose of that is to provide 20 uh, tokens in the game as we grow 
Um, it will work a lot like uh, Web2 gaming tokens, for example, Robux, which they have. Uh, the difference is our token will be available in liquidity pools on centralized and decentralized exchanges. So you'll be able to put those in pools, interact with pools, um, interact with saucer swap to move tokens in and out. And we will have access to those in the game as we launch. Um, so you won't have to physically leave the gameplay to interact with uh, liquidity pools, which is nice. Those 1 billion tokens uh, will be distributed over time. Uh, the promotion that we're doing now, we're actually giving out uh, 15 million Steam tokens. So 1.5% of uh, all of our tokens will be issued by May uh, just for uh, participating in our promotion um, and holding HBAR. Um, <clears throat> as we go, we'll have marketplaces on the game that are directly in Steam. So you don't have to buy things in uh, HBAR or Fiat through us and then convert that to Steam. You'll be able to use your Steam directly for that. Um, as I said wow. earlier, it is the lifeblood. So those, those tokens will be able to, anything that has to do with our things, you'll be able to use the Steam token. That's quite quite unique, really. I don't think there aren't too many projects where you don't have to do some sort of conversion. You can actually just spend the native token directly for the for the products that you want, and then presumably get a physical product too. Uh, I would imagine. Is, is that, yeah, is that in the plan? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a big part of the plan. Um, as a matter of fact, things that aren't purchased in Steam, if you purchase something with HBAR, which should be available, or other tokens. We are, we are going to physically um, implement a buyback of our Steam. So even if Steam isn't being used, we're going to add value to the Steam by doing buyback of Steam with the other currencies that come in. Okay, cool. And is there is there a burn mechanism or is it always going to be sort of that when, once you're finally released, it will be $1 billion in, in an ecosystem? Yeah, $1 billion, there is no plan uh, for a burn mechanism. We think that $1 billion is a good number so that um, people will have access and, and it'll be fair and usable in the game. It is divisible by more than one, so you can have a fraction of a Steam, which we're sure will happen over time and there'll be a need for that. But we, we intend to keep $1 billion. Wow, so how many, how many decimal places is it divisible to? And you must have big plans then because the need you, you you said that in time you think that will happen and actually will be necessary that means you've got big plans for a billion tokens to need to be liquidated uh, further to value to further down yeah it's, it's only two decimals um so it, it's not you're not going to hold one ten thousandth of um yeah. a steam but yeah we, we thought that two decimals would be good as long as we don't do a burn down and and decrease the value we we want the steam flowing through the game. Um, we have a secondary token that's not on chain, that's water, it's a reward token. Um, that's for a different conversation because it's not part of the HTS, um, yeah. but that will help also with the pressure on Steam. And it'll also drive the uh, value of Steam as far as Earthlings players are concerned. Okay, and what, what does the release schedule look like? I know you said there that would be 1.5% of the total supply kind of given to the you know, early adopters, the community that that have stuck with you and sort of gone on the ride with you. But what about the remaining uh, uh, tokens, the Steam tokens? Where, how will they be released? So um, uh, let me start with the team because that's the longest release. Uh, the team tokens will uh, have a 12-month cliff. So team members won't touch any tokens for 12 months. And then the release schedule is over the next 18 months. Um, so that gives time for um, some maturity and development of our token. Um, advisors, a uh, little shorter, that's six months. And we have Head Starter as our strategic partner um, who is vested with us in the project. So they will have a vesting period as well um, for their strategic partnership. As far as our INO, we have an INO coming up, initial NFT offering coming up in March. Uh, those dates will be announced very soon, um, maybe before this video hits the airwaves, but um, people will find out about that. Those are going to be uh, six-month release. So 
on day one, about 10% of our tokens uh, will be in the market. Um, and then we will slowly release over the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, by the time the full game is out, we should have about 70% of the circulating supply into the market. Uh, we're yeah. going to hold about hold about 30 um, for rewards and prizes um, and things for people to achieve in the game. So we'll always have that treasury that's holding tokens um, based on demand and promotions at the time. That's my next question, actually. Who's in charge of your treasury? Is it is it yourselves? Have you got a sort of um, a DAO or how is it structured? Yeah, it's it's no DAO. It is um, Earthlings land. The business will, will hold that treasury. Um, and then obviously anybody can look into that wallet at, at any time and see how and when those tokens are being moved in and out um, into the game. And is there is there a is there a lock period or anything or a lock feature on the the overall treasury? I know you've touched on sort of the the helpers, the employees, the advisors, the team, but what about the the, the remaining sort of you know, probably the lion's share of the treasury? How is that locked? Um, so with that, because it is a token that is for gaming and for the game, um, the disbursement on the lion's share, the thirty percent of the rewards treasury is scheduled for 105 months. So so many years of slow release. Um, we are launching Europe as our first continent, but the plan is to launch five more continents after that, which takes time. Um, so we want that treasury to be secured and last for the long term. Yeah, okay, that makes per perfect sense. So you've got longevity with the project as you expand out. But how does it... Um... A question that's interested me is how is the price decided at launch? So is, is that you guys? Is it the market? Is there a market maker? How does that get decided? Yeah, so, so um, with the market maker, um, we'll work with the centralized exchanges um, for our initial intention for the um, DEXs. We kind of had an idea to launch based on uh, a predetermined valuation that we've done internally. Um, so all of those details will come out. Um, it's it's a, what we think is a is a very fair market valuation for launch. So we're excited to see um, what happens with the token um, after launch. There's always volatility, um, but we wanted to to get it to where it's going to settle in at a reasonable place. Yeah, I bet you're excited. Uh, that must be so oh, exciting. Man. So much. You've been waiting for so long for this to launch, and you must be nervous. And a bit like having a, a, a new baby or something, I guess. Is uh, <laughs> you, you know, you're waiting to see what happens. It's 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 what makes waking up at four a.m. fun because every day it's something new, and every day's one day closer to the realization of everything we've been working on. That's so fantastic to hear, and you can see, it's, you know, you can see the excitement in your face when you talk about it. Um, so in 18 months time then, uh, 12 to 18 months time after the lockup period, where, where do you hope, you're talking then about, of course, there will be, you know, some fluctuations as the coin finds its place, its natural home in the market in terms of pricing. What, what do you think would be fair value? What would you be happy with? What, what's, what's the dream in terms of market cap? Well, so without speculating on um, specific numbers, what I think the potential with Earthlings is... Um, I would like to be, you know, Full Dreams, one of the top 100 games um, in in the world for PC. Not not Web3, but eventually I'd like to be one of the top 100 games. Um, and I think the opportunity is there. Um, so to not speak directly to token value, you can take that as it is. You can look at the market cap of the top 100 Web2 games and the top Web3 gaming systems and metaverse. Um, I, I don't see why we couldn't be right there with the best in the world or why we won't be with the best mm -hmm. in the world. And that comes from full confidence in the team and Hedera. Um, we have a game that's built on something that is fast. 
secure. And I think the Hedera token service um, is going to really explode. I think there are going to be some amazing uh, centralized exchange listings coming that really open um, the eyes to everyone and give access to not just our token, but all of these amazing businesses that are building and launching tokens. And that has a lot to do with where we can go. You know, if, if we were isolated to just the Hedera community, it's it would take a lot longer. But we've all seen this transition happening right in front of our eyes. And access is everything, right? So as people gain access to, to our tokens, they'll learn more about our project and and get to see what a special game in Metaverse we're building. I think you're absolutely right. And we're seeing that, aren't we, with the likes of Karate Combat. You know, we've got people coming into the enjoying enjoying Karate Combat who may not even realize it's built on Hedera. They just like buying the token the karate and then and placing their bets and watching the fights. Um, and so, yeah, we're definitely getting exposure in new markets. I think, and I think that would most likely happen with yourself. Do you think initially that it'll be the game that gets the most attention or the token? I mean, you want a little bit of both, right? I mean, if you yeah. if you if you were talking to Patrick right now, he would say, you know, quality gaming is all that matters. And in a sense, he's right. And if you ask me, I'm going to say um, token in Web3, token value is all that matters, right? Because that's what gets people looking at your quality project. So I really don't think you can have one without the other. Um, well, maybe in the last bull run, there was... There was a lot of token value without any project, but in reality, yeah. let's talk in, in reality, I think it, it's a bit of both. You're absolutely right. I think the key word there is sustainable. So you can't have, you can have the best game in the world, but if you don't have the value, it's not sustainable because you just can't physically pay the wages and attract the right talent. And if you have a load of money and no people, no project, it's just, you know, neither uh, one without the other is not sustainable. And that's the key. So I think that's a good answer. That they're both equally important, I would argue. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the way we're trying to drive the business, which is why Patrick puts so much faith in what I'm doing on financial end. And I keep my hands out of what he's doing on, on the game side because um, what Marcel can design and what Patrick is having his team build is beyond any expectations that I ever had when I read the first white paper. Wow, that's that that speaks volumes. Um, so I've got a personal question for you, for you now, Joe, if you don't mind. So you're not allowed to pick Steam, and you you can order them if you want, but you don't have to. What are your top three HTS uh, Hedera token service tokens? Um, and they can be anything. There's no right or wrong answer. Memes, businesses, mix of both. What what are your top three? So I think anybody that follows me on X knows <laughs> that I'm a huge fan of Karate Combat and what okay. they've done. And I've learned a lot from only LARPing and how he's distributed uh, karate and how he's grown the community. Obviously we don't have live <laughs> um, fighting events and we're a family friendly game, but we can take what he's done and apply a lot of those lessons. Um, and these aren't in any particular order. Um, and he put me on the spot. Number two is obviously going to be Sauce because as Steam is going to be the lifeblood of Earthlings, Sauce Sauce is the lifeblood of onboarding. People may get um, HTS tokens on centralized exchanges, but they're going to come in, and we see it with Karate Combat Karate holders. Um, they're going to come in and immediately go to um, the DEXs, Sauce being the primary um, place. Uh, to, yes. to do that and lastly it's another one that's not launched yet and it's because it's something i know that i'll use every day and it's something that most people in hedera use every day and that's the pack token through hashtag um, yes. um uh, if if i wasn't involved with earthlings i would say um that's going to be my favorite token obviously i am so i'm going to say steam is my favorite token but yes. uh, i think um I think PAX is going to be big, and uh, I think um, we're going to have a great relationship with HashPack, as we already have. And I think uh, community members are going to see some great things happen between Steam and PAX. 
um, in the future. Okay, so here's a bit of a coincidence for you. I've just come off the phone or the Zoom interviewing only Larpin, and my next call is made from Hashpack. So I'll, uh, I'll I'll tell her that you said hello. Yeah, that's that's great. I, I love I love both of them. That's those teams are or what we've been waiting on for years, right? So yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. That that is it's it's the first sort of real glimpse of genuine retail being on Hadira Hashcraft. And not only done quality and, and sort of triple A, as they say in the gaming industry, but also clearly scalable. You can see Karate Combat could be and probably will be massive. And I think that Hash Pack, through being involved with the, all these different companies, will rise with them all. Yeah. I, and, and hopefully that'll be Earthlings Lands too. I can't wait to see what you guys are coming out with. I think it's going to be very can you exciting. Give me about, sorry. Can you give me about 15 minutes to talk about the others I love? Because I don't want to leave. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't want to leave anybody out because there are so many amazing, amazing tokens out there and more to come. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a very tough question because there are so many. Uh, there's a few that keep keep popping up. I, I asked the same question of everybody that I've interviewed and one or two are the, are the same ones. So that's quite interesting. I don't know if anybody's reading into that, but uh, yeah, there's been quite a few rep uh, repeats of the same one. And then the third one is usually different every time I, I ask somebody. Um, Joe, is there anything else you want to say to the community before we uh, before we jump off? No, I will say it's uh, great to talk to you again. I haven't spoken directly since LA. Um, always nice to talk to you. Thank you for taking the time to cover not just our token, but um, all of the projects, the great projects that you're interviewing. And um, I just want everybody to look forward to, to what's coming. A lot of people have been waiting a long time. And um, I think um, Mant said it a couple of years ago, a lot of these things um, are a slow process, but many of them are going to happen, happen suddenly. And I think we're in for a sudden um, surge for, for a lot of these Hedera token service projects. I completely agree. Yeah, it's almost like a light. It's not. It's not. A, it's like a, a nothing for a long time. It's a bit like switching on a light switch. It's a dark room, and then all of a sudden it's not. Yeah. And and Absolutely. you're about to flick on your switch. So that's amazing. We can't wait. I I wish you all the success for the future. You're a hardworking team. You're good guys. You deliver quality products. So I hope it is an absolute raging success for you. Thank you very much, and I appreciate all that you do. No problem. Thanks so much, Joey. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hi, everybody. Right. Up next, we have Jake Hunsbusher, a.k.a. Warlock and Key. This uh, young, fine young man is the chap behind Grelf uh, token. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me, Jake. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. So, so can you tell us a little bit about about uh, Grelf token? It's I, I would argue it's probably the most popular. Is that fair to say on, on Hedera? It's, it's currently number one. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Meme coin yeah. wise, yes, yeah. And can you can you give us a little bit of, of the uh, about the background, sort of how it how it came to be, um, what the thinking was behind it? I mean, he is a weird looking chap. Um, he's uh, he's not he's not good looking. I, I think uh, I think we should, we can say that. Um, yeah. yeah. So the character uh, came before the token. Um, I was trying to. Uh, I, I have a NFT project called Crete's. I was trying to make a new video um, and I was previously, I had my warlock persona. It's basically like me with a hoodie with the hood up. Um, uh, and I do a weird voice for him because I do a lot of voice acting. You might know me as uh, I'm the voice of the saucer swap tutorials, for example. Hello friends. This video marks the first in a series that covers the key actions you will need to learn for the upcoming SaucerSwap V2 protocol. Um, and I was getting bored with those videos and I was like, okay, like, let me make a new character for this. Um, and I just thought it'd be funny to just have the worst spokesman possible uh, if I could just make the most... Uh, if someone was trying to sell me something in that voice, what would that voice be if I just wanted to run the other direction? Um, and I was in the shower when I came up with it, and uh, I almost slipped because I just started laughing so hard. It's just just awful. If somebody was trying to sell you a car and they sounded like this, you probably would not buy it. Um, so I, I, I came with the voice first. It's like, I'm going to use it for this video. And I was like, well, I don't want to just video myself. 
have already done that for the warlock videos i can't really do that um so dolly 2 just came out and i was just searching on there and uh the prompt was gross ugly balding man and i got one i looked like uh, that i liked and i just kept hitting like make variation make very uh, make variation and eventually i got this guy and something about him just just I have dreams about this guy. I something just took me. I'm so I sorry. just couldn't. I could. I couldn't drop it. Um, so I put in that video. Uh, he didn't even have a name at that point, uh, and just something about him. I just had to keep making more. I started. I named him. His name's Gerbert the Grelf. I started coming with the backstory, uh, and like writing like stuff about him. Just something. Something about him. I just couldn't put him down. Um, and then so that was August second that he was created. August 30th is uh, when I made the token in 2022. So been around for a while. Um, and I just thought it would be hilarious if somebody looked in their their wallet and saw that dumb face. Um, there weren't really meme coins around at that time. Uh, certainly none that were actually really making any money or had any money invested in them. Um, it was It was purely a joke. And it was pretty much dead for about six months. Uh, because I, I couldn't get listed on saucer swap. There was some kind of issue. It was really early on the, the decks had only launched like maybe a month previous to the creation of Grelf. Um, and so, uh, I eventually got listed and as soon as I did, like it started to take off. Um, and that was about a little over a year ago and then it massively dumped as meme coins do. Uh, and now it's, it's, it's starting to, to pump again. It, it, uh, it passed its previous all time high. Um, so things are going well, but you know, uh, I, you're not going to get any investment advice from me. Number one, whenever I buy meme coins, they, uh, they either rug or they go down. So I'm not a good investor. Uh, and two, the meme coin ride is not for the faint of heart. You know, that's a big roller coaster. So, yeah. you know, take uh, that in mind, absolutely. folks. Okay, so we'll, we'll we'll bear that in mind with, with anything you say. Uh, so my dad's probably going to watch this, and he's going to be thinking, what the hell are you talking about? This sounds mental. Um, so I just want to – I want people to understand how – this might sound crazy and a joke, and I think it's fantastic because it's artistic, and you've given this, this, this character life, and you've generated this image through AI – so it's got the tech element to it and everything else. And I'm just looking at your fully diluted valuation. And today it's 2.685 million pounds. So that's that's what, three three point three million dollars or something. The 24 hour <laughs> trading volume is 38,988 pounds. So it's as good as 40,000 pounds has been bought and sold in the last 24 hours. So this really, you know, it, it has taken off. Um, why did you choose the total supply of 6,666,666? uh because i thought it would be funny okay that's good enough good enough answer i mean it's a very low supply isn't it so in the in the in the hts token um ecosystem there generally is two in, in my opinion anyway there are two sort of variations there are businesses real businesses that have a token and the token may or may not facilitate something with the business but it's as as it's comparable to like a stock or a share in a company in, in Web2, in a real world. And then there are meme tokens that are just fun, speculative, you know, things to have a bit of a laugh. You know, it, it's a casino floor. Do you agree with that? And if so, where do you think you sit? Or do you think you sit halfway in between? Is there any utility with, with your token? No, I'm completely, completely on the far end. Uh, that's that's a fair assessment. Uh, it's it's a joke. It was started as a joke. A lot of meme coins have very high supply. Um, that's, that's the meta. But again, I was not making it with any knowledge or intention or you know i was not considering the the tokenomics or how it would appear i just thought it'd be funny that was it um it has no utility uh i don't i don't plan to have any utility i don't really want any utility uh in my opinion when a meme coin starts introducing uh in utility it kind of feels like they're starting that slide into well misrepresentation right uh, if you wanted a utility project make utility project uh adding on utility to a meme coin to me a lot of that utility is not not actual utility you know it's it's buy this nft get into this ecosystem you'll get a certain amount of tokens but less than you know how much you paid for the nft which will recycle that money it's just the whole thing um 
And I, I don't really support that. I, I just want Grelf to be funny. I want to make funny memes. Uh, when Grelf wasn't doing well, I kept making funny memes because I think he's funny. Uh, so, you know, no utility for Grelf. It's not happening. Okay. Well, do you know what? I really appreciate your honesty and your, your, your rarity because there aren't many people. And I don't think it's dishonesty necessarily. I think it's we're very early in this industry and I think there's some naivety. Um, I think that people truly believe that they can deliver certain types of utility over a longer period of time than they probably can. Um, I think people lose interest, get bored. I, some people just start out with bad intentions, that's for sure. Um, but I think there's a, there's a whole spectrum of different types of rugs and failures. So the fact that you've come out the gate saying, look, I do this because I love it. I think it's funny. I'm not promising anyone anything. If you want to come on the journey, great. And if you don't, no, no worries. I think that's really refreshing. But I also think that it's really interesting that you're willing to put your name to it at the same time. So you you admit it's a joke, but it's a joke and you you take ownership of, which I think is it, people will find uh, endearing because there's a lot of one of my bugbears, as a lot of people know, is the whole we were discussing before we started speaking on camera. One of my bugbears with Web3 was that it, the whole thing was supposed to be peer to peer, transparent and, and actually I'm one of the few people on X on Galaxy that uh, the, the, my my profile picture is me. It's not a PFP, and my name is my name. People know who I am. Like I'm the only guy in the room who fell for the complete transparency peer to peer thing. I turned up to the party, and everybody else is wearing a mask. Um, so we've gone from having a few faceless uh, uh, corporations to having thousands of tiny faceless corporations. Uh, but it, so it's refreshing to see somebody else of the same vein. That's that's really nice to see. Where do you see Guelph in a year's time, two years' time? Like, what's, what's the dream? I know you're not taking it seriously, and I know there is no utility, but do you hope to see Guelph on T-shirts walking down the main street, or is do you have any aspirations? Uh, I, def I, have a, I have a secret dream. I'll let you know my secret dream. Um, my secret dream is that Guelph gets big enough that I can basically fund a creative studio. Um, I, have, I have a very creative background. I have a, a master's in fine arts uh, in theater. Uh, you know, I do a lot of creative stuff. Uh, and, and one thing that's super refreshing about Web3 that I've noticed is it's so much easier to get people to see your work, right? If you make something creative, if you make something funny, um, if you write something, uh, I have a few published plays, for instance, and, you know, theater in America is is, is tough. Um, it's, you know, you've got, you know, uh, Broadway and everything, right. But if you're just a guy, it's, it's really hard to get your work out there, get your work, uh, seen, get your work produced. Um, and in web three, it's just so much easier to connect with a community. Uh, if you just sort of relate it to a certain cryptocurrency people are already interested in, they're, they're very welcome, uh, welcoming and open to, you know, embrace you and what you're doing. That's interesting. Uh, my experience with Grelf is, has just been, I mean, it's it's been a godsend for having creative outlet and getting an audience for people to enjoy it. Um, so it's really just as far as I can push that. Uh, that's that's the dream. Uh, I, I have I have a small merch site. I'm working on making more t-shirts. But yeah, I mean, seeing Grelf's ugly face on a bus would just be the funniest thing in the world to me um, because he's just, he is the opposite of any other mascot you would see. He's not cool. Uh, he's not cute. Uh, he's just, you know, he would not PC either. Is he? He's quite rude. So, uh, he's yeah, a, he's a rude boy. He's the anti-hero, <laughs> isn't he? He's the, he, he's, yeah, yeah, he's the, the anti-mascot. Um, so it's just, you know, any kind of way I can extend that creatively is, is, is very funny to me because he just doesn't fit. Well, I truly hope having, having the pleasure of met, meeting you, I truly hope that this does lead to you. Uh, to bigger things for you personally and, and for your projects um, because you, you seem like a you know, genuine, sincere guy. So I really hope that happens for you. Um, where do you see, do, do you think you're, you're currently sitting at, well, Guelph is currently sitting at 40 pence. So I don't know what that is in cents, like 55 cents, something like that, somewhere around there. It's like um, 50, it's like 50. Yeah, okay. So, so it's a new all-time high uh, for Guelph. Do you think that represents fair value or do you think it should be double that or half that? Where, where's fair value? That's a hard, that's a hard question to answer. Um, fair value. Uh, the, the heights that it has reached 
have been completely, completely unexpected. Uh, you know, it was it was like two to three cents a few months ago. And I was like, man, if we can get to seven cents, that'd be great. Uh, didn't think this was going to happen. Probably the most blown away I have ever been is when it finally reached one cent. You know, everything past that, I have no frame of reference anymore. I'm just like, Okay. Uh, honestly, it stresses me out. Uh, it hits the all time high now is 60 was 65 cents. And when it hit that, I was just really stressed. I was like, I, people are going to expect things. Uh, what goes up must come down. How far is it going to go down? Uh, honestly, compared to last little cycle, this has uh, not been as crazy. I mean, you can look at the chart it's just like, um, yeah. so we at least have some support levels now. That's probably cause I I've, I've continued to add liquidity to the pool. Um, when previously I was just like, uh, I mean, I put, I put like a, about $10,000 of my own money in uh, a lot of people thought that was really stupid. Um, I think I, it was stupid. It worked out. Yeah, but yeah, just because it worked out, it doesn't mean it wasn't stupid. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was not smart. I'll, t- I'll tell you that. But it did work yeah. out. Um. So yeah, I have no idea what the fair value is. Are your family and friends aware of this? Do they? Do they think you're nuts? Do they? Is this like a, a big dirty secret you have, or is this something they're involved with? They're they're very aware of it because I won't shut up about it. Um. <laughs> My mom has no idea what any of this stuff means. Um, she just, she's just is like, is your Gerbert token doing good? Uh, she's, she, well, me and her both Southern. Um, uh, my friends previously, uh, I would show them, you know, what he looks like. And I still get this reaction now where they're like, oh God, take it away. Take it away immediately. Um, I think one lady was like, huh, oh, nightmares was like, <laughs> Her first reaction. Now, after a year of, of exposure therapy, a lot of people like him. They're like, oh, he just kind of seems sweet. Um really? I mean, I, I yeah, yes. I, I I don't know how, but it's just I guess eventually they start like attributing positive traits to him over time. Um do they get the money side of it? Do they understand that you're this is a real thing now? Some do. Some understand because I, you know, I, I talk about it and try to explain it. Other people are like, so you made ugly bald man token and and people, people buy it? People buy it? Is it For like no an reason? online store? <laughs> yeah, why do why do people buy it? Uh I because maybe the number will go up or cause they think it's funny. I mean he blinks in your hash pack now, so that's that is that that's utility. Something. So you said there was no utility. <laughs> Come on, Jake. You're now off the utility. <laughs> He's blinking in the hashback wallet. Okay, so um, I, I really, really appreciate your time. And I, th- I think the project's fantastic. Um, and, and I love, to, to be fair, I love the honesty and the transparency. And you're so upfront about it. Like, I promise you nothing. Um, you can't choose your own token. You can do them in order if you want to, but you don't have to. Top three... Uh, HTS tokens that you love. What are your What are your top three picks? You can't choose your own. Well, of course, of course. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm some not somebody else. I can't remember who, but somebody picked all three as themselves. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's something I we see a lot, and uh, I do not like that. Uh, you know, a lot of people are like, "Oh, give us a shout out," and you know, I, I try to shout out other projects I like. Um, number one, Sauce. That's easy. Um, you know, Saucer Swap has been very good to me. It's been very good to Grelf. Um, Give me a lot of support. Uh, so number one, Sauce, I hold, that's probably the one I hold the most of is Sauce. Um, let's see, number two has not released yet, but I'm really excited about it, which is the Hashpack token pack. Because again, Hashpack's been very good to me. Uh, I, I know a lot of those guys, they're, they're great guys. Number three, hmm, hmm. There's a lot of competing ones. There's a lot of competing ones. I mean, I also uh, have had a good relationship with Dovu, um, with with Matt Smithies. I did some tutorial videos from him as well. Um, it's been really interesting seeing their journey because um, they they also converted their their token from from Dove to Dovu, um, and that was a really interesting uh, process. And Ethereum you know, they're to Adira, yeah. Well, and then again, 
Yeah, because yeah, they, yeah, they they completely made a new a new one on HTS um, with a different supply and everything. And just seeing them, you know, they they try so many different things. Um, they they're they're always trying to get in on on everything Hedera is doing. So I would I would yeah. say those are my top three. Okay, thank you. Just la last question, uh, um, because you just touched on source of swap and how the you you said the team there has been really good and really supportive for you what's that journey if anybody watching this at home is thinking you know i i want to create a token i want to create a, a project for whatever reason what what would you kind of um what's what's your advice to them to do that my my advice technically it's so much easier now um yeah. if you want to make a token just go into the hashback wallet go to advanced settings token creator it'll take you five seconds yeah. um, it's cheap fast just you know do it uh you want it on saucer swap go to saucer swap it's like a 50 dollars worth of h bar to make an lp you're done yeah uh longevity wise if you're making a meme token uh which is something i can give you a little advice on focus on the memes is your token funny do you care about it uh because if you don't care about it why would you expect other people to just in general, if you're not going to put effort into it, if you're not going to continue to support it with at least something, you know, it's like, oh, meme toys, uh, you know, or it's it's money out of thin air. I put way more work into growth than you might assume. Uh, and if you're not willing to put any work into something, you're really just going to expect people to just throw you money for free. Uh, you shouldn't. Yeah. You shouldn't. Um, make it funny. Make it fun. Engage your community. If it goes badly, don't disappear. It's gone badly for me several times. You just just keep going. Were you, were you only in it for when the number went up? Because if that's the only thing that you care about, it's really not for you because they're not just going to go up forever. They're extremely volatile asset. Uh, and if it's just about the money for you, you're not going to enjoy yourself and there's really not much point. No, because you're not gonna. You're not gonna. It's that longevity, isn't it? It's that sticking at it when it's when it's dark and cold and lonely and nobody wants to pay you any attention. I think you touched. You said funny a couple of times there, but I don't think that's the only thing. I mean, you you could be a load of different things, couldn't you? Or am I wrong? Does it have to be funny, or could it be dark, or could it be you know um, charity narrative? Does it does it have to be funny, or is funny your go to? I mean, funny is my go to um, because it's like how are you gonna how are you going to uh, get a good reaction? That's uh, how are you going to catch attention? Right? Humor is an easy way. It can be dark. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to produce content for stuff like that. Uh, humor is a very wide spectrum. You can do other stuff. I've seen people try to kind of do an other spin on things. Uh, they don't typically last very long. Cause there's a certain point where you kind of just run out. If you, if you put yourself in kind of a limited space where humor, you can go anywhere. Maybe today I'll make Grelf into a duck. You know, it's like, it's the sky's the yeah. limit on what people can find funny or find enjoyable. But if you, if you limit it to certain things, charity stuff, I don't consider even a meme coin, honestly. Um, you know, if you're if you're legitimately trying to support a charity and saying like, yeah, this token may be, you know, not a, a great speculative asset for you, but uh, we're supporting a charity. You know, that, to me, that's a whole different bag, um, and and you know, completely valid. Uh, it doesn't always have to be funny. A lot of people do the cool angle, um, but at the end of the day, they still make lots of jokes because you know, memes are in a base level about about comedy um but it's not exclusive but yeah that's my go-to okay perfect well thank you so much uh for your time time Jake. just on i know you mentioned earlier about t-shirts and merchandise where can people go if, if if they want to get involved with that well you can check the website which is uh, grelf.me grelf me um if you specifically want to see the merch it's Crete shop dot my so c r e e t that's nice and easy yeah don't worry don't worry i'll guys i'll put a link in the description below so i'll save jake trying to spell it out and i'll save you guys trying to remember it i'll put a link in the description below uh with all the other links of all the other different projects that are on this sort of mega video and uh if you're interested in seeing that then you, you can do that i don't know why you'd want to buy one of those t-shirts no offense Guelph. uh but if you do then go nuts <laughs> Um, Jake, uh, Warlock and Key, thank you so much for your time. I I, I love your work in the community. Uh, I think you're a, a really solid chap and a, and, a, and a good egg. So thank you so much. And I'm glad you've had the success you've had because you truly deserve it. And I hope that this leads to even bigger things for you, both in Web 2 and in Web 3. So thank you so much for your time.
And thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Cheers, buddy. Bye. Wow. On to a big one. I have the honor of being with Mei Chan from Hashpack. I feel like I need sound effects. I need like a, I need a drum roll because, and I'll tell you why, because of all the people that I have said on X to the community um, that I'm going to be talking to, I think the single most uh, exciting one for everybody is Hackcoin from Hashpack. And also I've been asking people a question of the other projects and Pack is the answer to that question, which I'll be asking you later, May, and I don't want to spoil the surprise. So I'll be asking that question later. But the answer for a lot of people has been Pack. So there's a lot of excitement, especially when you consider the token doesn't even exist yet. Yeah, that's a that's a really fun one. I think that people are really excited for what Pack could be, and we've been uh, very careful about slowly releasing information um, just because we want people to have the chance to get excited about it, to hear it about it over time. And everything that we've released has been very deliberate um, and my team is great. We haven't leaked anything. So um, everybody has a fair chance at, uh, at you know, learning about the token and participating when, when we finally get to the launch and, you know, all the stuff that we're doing afterwards. Okay, amazing. So um, I, I hope we'll get to that. So um, I, I, I'm i always honest with everybody, and you know I'm a big fan, so this, this is coming from a good place. But with my Web2 hat on, I've always been a little bit nervous for Hashpack because I couldn't understand how it would be, what the revenue model for you would be, and how because you've got to scale a wallet massively yes. for the tiny little incremental um, fees that you get. So that doesn't actually mean anything to be sustainable business. It's got to be massive, okay? And that's going to take time on Hedera. So the fact that you've launched a token, I think is potentially a very, very good idea, both for your own sustainability, but also as another layer to allow the community to get involved. Would you? Is that mm -hmm. fair? Would you agree with that? Yeah. Um, actually, let me comment on that because I would say that uh, one of the tough things about um, making a wallet is that investors are very... Uh, very critical of that as a platform that can make money. Um, I go, I go to investors and I say, "Hey, look at MetaMask, look at Phantom," and they're like, "Those are like the top tier, like heavyweights in the space, and every other wallet is struggling, right?" So why would we invest money in this? Because wallets don't make money. That's kind of like the the thing that all the investors tell me, and I'm just like, "Well, but we're." We're doing very well in this ecosystem. We're growing it. We've got a really great community and it's it's getting more and more hype. And now we're in 2024 and the stuff that I was saying a year ago to investors is now coming true. Um, it's very exciting. Um, and yeah, that's absolutely true about the revenue system with wallets. It's typically revenue driven. Um, uh, sorry, revenue is typically commission driven. So, you know, if people swap in the wallet, if people like, do things in the wallet, um, then we take a small cut for the convenience. Uh, but we also provide all of the base um, Hedera features just like without any extra charge. You know, if you're doing something that's just basic on the network, you don't get anything. Um, but if you do something within Hashpack that is, makes it easier for you to do uh, what you want to do, then we do take a small cut. And it's a very small cut. But uh, the very cool thing is that since Hedera DeFi has been taking off this year, we've actually seen a huge growth in revenue. And that means huge growth in uh, transactions on the network in volume um, and huge growth in DeFi. And that's really, really, uh, really exciting to see. And we hope to see that just continue to grow. Um, so yeah, the, the token um, isn't uh, really about... Uh, making money. Um, of course, that money is going to be very useful for us to uh, incentivize the community and build out features for Hashpack and uh, do all the things that money can help you do. But uh, we were very careful when we thought about launching a token and why we wanted to launch a token, where the motivations were. And money is not one of the top ones. Um, it's, a, it's a nice side effect, but it's it's really like what we can accomplish with it. What's the utility uh, that we're excited about? Okay, so let's touch on that a little bit then. So can you talk about the basics first, or the tokenomics? Do you have you do you have like a fixed market cap? Is it going to be, you know, is it going to be an infinite supply? What what kind of supply are we looking at? Yeah, uh, a lot of that information hasn't been uh, released yet, but I'll just share some very simple ones and hope that my team doesn't kill me. 
um, the token supply will be fixed. And I won't tell okay. you how much it is, but it's going to be um, all minted at the start. And then it's going to be released per the tokenomics, uh, per release schedule. And all of that will be public uh, before we launch the token. Um, it, let's see. Uh, we'll, we'll be launching the exact tokenomics uh, after the INO because if we don't sell out, then it changes how we distribute things a little bit, but not too much. Um, and so that will be coming out after the launch, but it will be very clear. And I think people will be pretty happy. We've been asking a lot of people, uh, what should we do with regards to the tokenomics, people who have launched successful projects in this ecosystem and also others. Um, and uh, we've been very careful to do things as best we can, the right way that we can to ensure the health of the token and, you know, make sure that people are happy. That's uh, that's always been on our mind. Okay, so you, I, I don't want to push too hard, but is it is it more or less than the number of H bars? Can you say that much? Oh yeah, it's less. Okay. But, yeah, I guess I guess like um, it's a funny question because if you just change the decimal place, then you can affect how the token performs. But yeah, it's less and uh, it's. Uh, I think that people are going to be fairly happy with the tokenomics okay. when they come out. Yeah. Okay, good. And how, how so are you going to give, uh, are you going to reward early adopters, sort of community members, uh, you know, OGs in the space? How is that going to work? How do people get involved? So there's, there's, so one of the things that we've been very careful about is making it so that the system can't be gained. Uh, so that's why we are being very careful about how we release the information, because what we want to do is make sure that everybody has um, a clear idea of how they're going to get the token um, and how they can participate. And we don't want people going out and um, like buying a bunch of things and and really disrupting the market um, with uh, information before uh, like. So, for example, um, if there's a drop, which we've actually, well, we basically confirmed that there is going to be a drop of some sort, but we don't want to confirm exactly what it is before we take the snapshot, because otherwise that's going to affect things like even more severely than, than people have speculated now. Uh, people are already speculating which ones, but we think it's still fairly under control. Um, but we basically just don't want to reward people for um, trying to game the system. So uh the main way to get the token for launch is to participate in our concierge collection which we are launching uh more and more information but i think the confirmed date is the first week of march that okay. you'll be able to purchase that and you'll be able to purchase that directly in hashpack and then as re as for uh rewarding loyal supporters and longtime users of hashpack um and uh who exactly is a part of that, um, that will be released, I think, as well on the first. And we will see uh, exactly who can participate. That's only less than a week from now. Um, and uh, I, I will we'll be putting like the reasonings behind why we've done it. But basically, it's all about uh, our community. It's all about people that have shown that they have uh, like really um, supported Hashpack and participated. And I hope that people will see that we've thought a lot about the fairness of this drop and um, made sure that we keep people as involved as possible. And, you know, um, there's a lot of speculation about what that's going to be, including some that just kind of doesn't make sense if you sort of put on your thinking hat a bit. Um, and so, yeah, I, I hope that when it comes out, we'll put out a little bit of information on why we went through that. And I think the community will un understand that. I, th I think you're right. There is a lot of speculation at the moment, but that kind of just goes to show the enthusiasm and sort of excitement over this token. I've got some good news for you, mate. You can tell me anything you like, because the only people who watch my videos is my dad, uh, Christian <laughs> Hasker, but he only watches the first couple of minutes. He told he said that to my face. And then real H barbarians. So the only people are going to see this video are the people, exact people you're talking about that you want to reward. So if you want to, uh, you know, do an exclusive in this interview, feel absolutely feel safe and secure to do so. 
Um, so, okay, so we can't talk about the tokenomics in too much detail. What what are the market makers, um, if you're using a market maker, what are they kind of advising in terms of the entry level price? Do you have any idea what that might be? Can you talk up, touch on that? Um, I don't. However, uh, we are trying to. So basically, the way that I've been explained is that if you launch, like we're going to be launching a liquidity pool with part of the treasury that uh, uh, on launch, and we're setting that up uh, with Saucer Swap. And there will be a period of price discovery on that pool, right? Um, but the price that we are looking for or the, that we're setting it up is basically going to be as fair as we can with the um, with the concierge collection so that people basically get like their... Uh, I, I have to be very careful about this, right? Because otherwise my team and my lawyers will be very mad at me, but um, we, we want it to be fair. We want to make sure that people are feeling like they are getting what they expect and we don't want to um, devalue or overvalue the token on launch. And then after price discovery, then um, there will be like hopefully some excitement and then there will be more pools that are created by the community that more accurately reflect where people think the value of the token is. Okay. Okay. Understood. Um, so can you talk, talk about, uh, otherwise this is going to be a real struggle as an interview. Can you, can you talk a little bit about the hope, hopefully the utility and some of the plans you have? Cause this yeah. isn't a meme coin, is it? This is a utility coin. It so is. Can you touch on some of the utility? So the coin come out now, everybody's happy. It's done great things. What's, what's it for? Yeah, absolutely. And this is actually something I can talk more in depth about because we've been releasing information about the utility of the token and of the collectibles uh, throughout this time. So the main thing is that it's, you could see it as, you could see PAC as a loyalty token, a rewards token, right? Um, and basically the idea is that you'll be using uh, hash pack and the stuff that you do in the wallet will... Uh, reward you with pack. So if you're swapping in the wallet, if you're listing on the marketplace, uh, that one might be some time in coming. But basically, we want to reward you if you're using our services. Uh, we are taking a uh, and you're where there's a fee for the convenience uh, of using it in the wallet. Part of that fee is returned to the user in terms of pack token. Um, and right now, I think launch we are just doing. Uh, just doing the swap, but we have lots of other things that we want to use PAC for that basically is about uh, using the token and passively getting PAC for using hash PAC, sort of like getting points when you go to Starbucks and you buy a coffee and then you get a few points. And then later on, you can get something with those uh, with those points. Um, we have some very easy ways to spend PAC in the wallet, which is uh, you can buy some themes. Uh, we might have some exclusive themes for PAC. Um, and, but we have, those are kind of like the, the base level stuff, but we want to build out more and more ways to use it. And we have actually some exciting things uh, planned, which I just cannot say because uh, Tyler will kill me or Pluto will kill me. But um, we we really have some, a, a really nice roadmap around making PAC really fun and making people more connected in the community. We really uh, want to build this space, build the NFTs out and, and make people happy. Um, so that's kind of pack token. Um, there will also be, of course, ways to uh, like provide liquidity and that has its own sort of rewards uh, around that. Um, we're working with Saucer Swap on that. We're working with some other partners and basically, hopefully there'll be ways to uh, use the token that is not just inside the uh, the wallet. The other thing that we have is uh, governance. So we wanted to have a way of letting the community participate more formally in some of the things that we do at Hashpack. And so we are going to allow people who hold the token to vote um, on various initiatives. So let's say that uh, there are a few things that we want to do. Um, but we don't know which features are most important to the community. We put out a vote and let people do that. Um, another thing that we discussed is if there are some uh, dApps that are coming up, letting people vote in dApps. 
um, and that will show up in the store, things like that, that really kind of help the community weigh in on the hashtag experience. Uh, so that's one way that you can participate in that. And people who hold the uh, concierge collection will also have a small multiplier attached to that. Um, so basically there's a benefit to having that and then it gives you a little bit more weight in when you uh, when you vote on things in Hashpack. So that will come out uh, after the launch and we'll be putting out more information on that. Um, in terms of other utilities, there's some cosmetics that we are gonna be having. Uh, not sure exactly what it is, but we hope to do something interesting with uh, the concierge collection. Uh, that isn't just another theme, although it might also include a theme. Uh, not sure yet, that's still in, in production. Um, and then okay. more utilities coming out as time goes on. Um, and of course you get hacked people, from getting it. So it's, it's basically an engagement then. So you can engage yes. in a more, in a more uh, visceral way with Hashback. You can make some decisions, you can have a vote. So that's really interesting and a good way to tie uh, the community together and also reward them at the same time. So I think that's a, that's a really worthwhile endeavor on, on your part. Do you know yet, is there going to be a lockup period? Who's going to be in charge of the treasury? Um, do you, is it a board that you're going to appoint or have appointed? Is it, is it going, you know, is it yourselves? How's that going to work? It, it is ourselves, but we are setting up contracts, uh, smart contracts to uh, handle the, the vesting and the distributions, um, that kind of thing. And that will also be released, uh, the schedule and all of that will be released within time. Um, it is within the team. It is a, a uh, something that Hashpack is launching. Um, so we do want to make sure that we can control it so that we can have uh, have a, a healthy token. Uh, we want to make a, an ecosystem out of it. And so that's to start. Um, who knows what will happen in the future, but at the very least, we want to make sure that the launch of the token is healthy and the first few months are going to be good. Um, another thing that I didn't, that, that I wanted to mention is that we are also actively looking for um, community projects to work with and to uh, have participate in our token and in our uh, concierge collection. So one of the ones that we are uh, announcing today is that uh, we are teaming up with Dovu. And basically, if people hold the uh, concierge collection, then they will get a boost when they stake Dovu on the Dovu platform. Um, and that is a, a bonus that just, if you hold it, you get it if you want to participate with Dovu. And we hope to have other such things in the future. So basically, lots of ways to sort of multiply your engagement in the community. If you're doing things in the Hedera ecosystem, then we want to enable that. And that's basically been our like main strategy across the spaces. Like we want to just amplify what everyone else is doing, because that's basically what a wallet is. Exactly that. Yeah, fantastic. So, okay, time to ask you the question that I've been asking everybody along the way. You have to choose three other tokens, HGS tokens. You can't choose PAC. Uh, you can either give me your top three in order or in no specific order. What are three coins that you personally, that's May, not, not uh, hash pack, uh, you personally are a big fan of and why? Okay, so uh, the first one that I'll say is Sauce. I think Sauce is great. I think the team is fantastic, um, really knowledgeable, really open. Um, and they are the reason that DeFi is kicking off right now. Uh, we wouldn't be here without Saucer Swap. So I think Sauce has a really uh, great utility, really great um, future. And I am I am a fan of them. Um, I will say that I don't buy tokens. I, I just uh, I, watch the space, but I think that I think that sauce has a really great utility. So I think that's that's a great one, um, and I like the team. Uh, the second one is Karate Combat, uh, the Karate token, and that is because I think it's super cool that you can participate in uh, like uh, voting for things. I think they did a uh, a vote on one of their rules recently, and people voted, and and they they took the result, and that's changed the rules that people. Uh, competed with in in their ring or in their pit, um, and then recently they did their uh, their Bitcoin uh, crypto influencer event and had Bitboy out there uh, beating the crap out of people. Uh, that was that was that was really fun, and and we had people 
uh, our Discord community just sitting in a channel and, and restreaming it and, and watching it and uh, getting really hype about all of these influencers just coming in and, and showing a good a good show. Uh, that was that was really fun. So I, I think that karate has a, a fun use case, and I think that that's really important. Um, and they, uh, yeah, just like being able to bet with funny internet money on the results of a of a, a fight that you watch on TV. Like I think that that's makes it very unique and very fun. Um, so I think that that's my number two. My number three, I think I will put it. Hmm, First two are easy. And I had a bunch in my mind around that. Let me let me hop into my list of tokens here. Those two are easy. Number three, huh? I was gonna say Dovu because I think that Dovu has been very solid in their thing and there's a lot of utility. Uh, but it's also <laughs> it's also not fun, I suppose, and I'm a I'm a a DJ at heart. Uh, I not a, not in the trading sense, but in like kind of the hype sense. I, I really like things that are fun to do. Um, it's okay to say Grell. It's all right, but I won't wanna... say Grell because I just it's just not a cute token. Like, couldn't we have a cute meme coin that picked up in the space? But we have Grell, and I've I've bugged. I bugged uh, the guy who started Grelf many times on this, and he's just like, "Hey, you can't help what people like." So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so what's another, your third pick? Oh, man, I've got to push it. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Steam. I'm gonna go with Earthlings. I think that that team has been really trying to uh, build out a a strong community and a, a really good looking game. They've really put a lot of effort and passion into this. And uh, they've also had a really great run on the marketing side, uh, Web3 style marketing with NFT drops and getting people really enthusiastic and and informed about what they're doing. So I think that they're they're getting uh, a lot of points for me for just being a really great Web3 project and, and a really great team. So that's my third, I guess. Well, uh, uh, let me tell you, uh, just before this, interview i was with joey from things london he couldn't speak highly enough of you and your team and he actually asked me to say hi to you so uh there we go so the love is mutual so that's uh that's always nice to hear isn't it yeah uh we work really closely with them and hopefully we'll continue to find collaborations yeah is there is there anything else that, that you want to say to the community whilst whilst i've got you because i know we haven't spoken actually before have we despite no being so close in the ecosystem and things it's, it's unusual you were saying just off camera before we started that you we and you're right we haven't actually spoken before i met jacob probably too many times uh, no, i'm joking <laughs> jacob if you're watching this i'm joking um but is there anything you want to you want to say to the community while we're together yeah um i think i i, I just want to thank the community for being so supportive of us um and so uh communicative over time like not just since the launch of uh since the announcement of our token but uh just in the past uh we really cherish all of the stuff that you guys say especially when you come into the server the discord server or on twitter and you say hey this is a problem that we're having with hashpack can you guys fix it or uh can you make it easier and we we love that kind of feedback we think it is unusual for apps to get that kind of uh that kind of engagement from people. People usually just, if they don't like an app, they don't use it, right? You don't put a, a bad rating. You just don't use it at all. You, you move on. So having a community that engages with us and tells us what they like and what they don't like is, is fantastic. And I think that it's made Hashpack better. Um, and so we listen really closely. And uh, there's a lot of hype and a lot of... Um, a lot of speculation and a lot of you know theories about what pack could be and i love to see it um and i just thank the community for being so patient with us and for trusting us to do our best to launch this token as fairly and as uh professionally as we can um that means a lot to me so thanks and i hope that we'll have a great launch and a great future for pack and for the hedera ecosystem that you know, said it better, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the community is fantastic, and the fact that, they, like you say, they are wet in what other industry, and even in Web three, in a lot of communities, where else people just don't use what they don't like. But with with you're very fortunate, and as are many other projects, that they get that feedback, that time, that effort, and if they're wise enough to take that and run with it, 
then they're just going to get stronger and stronger and the community feels empowered so they're more likely to engage which which is fantastic do you have a do you have a precise date yet for the launch of pack it's going to be i think the schedule is okay so there's two there's there's the uh ino which i think is very first week of march and then i think the launch is going to be sometime in april and that is something that Jacob has said many times. So I think that we can aim for that. So we're basically like less than two months out. Uh, it's a very short timeline, but we are we really want to just hit the ground hard and uh, let this thing run. Let this yeah. thing run. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. How exciting. Okay. Where do people go to, to 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 learn more? Obviously, a lot of people watching this will already have a hashback. But yeah. just in case somebody's watching this who doesn't, where's the best place to get started? Where can they learn more about hashback? The, the number one way that we release news is on our Twitter, which is at hashpack app. Um, we also have links to that in our website, which is hashpack.app. Um, and those are probably the best ways. The other way is if you're more tech savvy, uh, you can go on Discord and, and talk to us directly there. Uh, and if you guys have any issues or problems or questions, there's our support lines. Uh, you can either message us directly on Twitter or Discord. Um, we have a support bot in Discord. You can also go to our website and there is a chat bot in the bottom right corner, but it's not a bot. It's actually manned directly by our staff. Um, so uh, you'll get personalized service there and we try very hard to make sure that uh, everybody gets heard. Um, those are the only ways to get support. So don't try talking to some account that calls themselves hashtag support. That's not us. It is definitely like either a, a ticket on the Discord server or talking to the bot on the hashpack site. And make sure you do have the official hashpack site because there are fake sites out there and we're doing what we can to take them down. But uh, yeah, this is a, a really kind of scary world. And the more successful that we get, the more people try to take advantage of that. So make sure you're on the official site, make sure you're on the official um, Discord and then you guys will be good. And we're also always trying to find ways to make that even easier. So uh, if you have any ideas, just send us a line. May, thank you so much for your time. It's uh, It's been really, really interesting. And I think you guys are fantastic. You already know that. Everybody thinks what you're doing so great. Uh, you've you've single-handedly onboarded or at least made it, the whole process of onboarding far easier for the entire community. So thank you very much for that. And I know that your project, uh, your, your new uh, pack, uh, token project will be a raging success having spoken to all the other creative people and thought leaders in the space they all concur that pack is the one to watch so uh, i'm you. very very excited to see what happens and uh i might be uh saving up to get myself one of these concierge uh nft collections thank you brilliant thanks so much mate take care hi everybody so we've got a really exciting one up next i have the absolute pleasure of being with tobachi who is the ceo and founder of um, HBAR Suite. How are you, sir? Hi, thanks a lot for having me. I'm doing very well, thanks. What about you? Good, living the dream. Thank you very much for asking. Um, so I have to be honest, this is the first time I've had an interview with somebody who is literally living in the metaverse. You were saying just off camera there <laughs> that you've got, what, four or five screens and you've got the headset and you just live in the dream. Yeah, well, I live most of my time in cyberspace. Get myself super productive in it, you know. I take regular breaks here and there. So, yeah, I make sure that I look at 20 feet distances every half hour or so. I try okay, to keep good. it uh, balanced. And that keeps you healthy, does it? Yeah, good. And you're drinking plenty of water, I hope. Keep hydrated. Always, yeah. Good man. Purely filtered water. <laughs> good, good man. Okay, so tell us tell us a little bit, for people who don't know, who aren't familiar, tell us a little bit about HBAR Suite and what it is you guys do. What, what was, What's the plan? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, well, HBAR Suite is basically a suite of uh, DeFi services, which has been built on uh, top of the Hedera network. And we, we, we're basically like a layer 1.5, which is like, we're not a layer 1, not a layer two, but like a wet in the middle. And the best way to explain this in another way is uh, we are uh, the AppNet, an AppNet, which is an application network. And it's the AppNet concept is basically the vision that Dr. Limon Baird, who's the inventor of the Hedera Hashgraph consensus algorithm, has always had as a vision, even before when the smart contracts came in into the Hedera ecosystem. Um, so application network, they're basically in a 
in a, it's a way to, in a decentralized manner, create applications that can also allow you to perform like a decentralized finance operations, anything that is related with the uh, Web3 world without the use of smart contracts and uh, can be really groundbreaking. And the way that we achieved this, uh, we basically created the, uh, what we call the smart nodes, uh, which aim to replace the smart contracts. Okay. So for, 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 can we can you put that into layman terms? So give me one really super easy example that my dad would understand as to what it is you do can you explain a, a very simple product uh, that you offer sure uh some of the products we offer is like a token exchange where let's say like in a regular world uh, we with our technology will allow you to exchange you one dollar for one euro for example and the really cool thing and something that is very unusual is that in those type of exchanges usually when uh, you want to exchange one euro for a dollar you don't you're not sure exactly if you're gonna get like uh one more than a dollar or a little less and that's called like market slippage uh with our technology you know exactly what you're gonna get even before you sign it so if we tell you're gonna get a dollar for one or one euro you're exactly gonna get that and you don't even have to read any code uh, solidity code or anything like that you can see it in uh, the wallet transaction even before signing it and this wow. is just like one of the many features that we have we also have like a, a launch pad which is basically like um, where, uh, where if you wish to buy a token that is on sale, a pre-sale, for example, not exchangeable on an exchange yet, or an NFT sale, for example, we have a DAO engine, which is basically a mechanism where people, token holders, like shareholders, are allowed to create proposals, uh, vote on things like of an ecosystem. Like if you wish to change something and the... Within our ecosystem, you know, you can propose that and then people can vote and decide all together. Uh, we have a multi-sig wallet, which is a really cool uh, feature that we also have. And you, for example, which your family could have, you and your kids and your wife have a shared account where nobody's allowed to take the money out uh, unless there is like uh, the approval of everybody. Um, yeah, we have so many features that we can speak about today. Uh, I can keep okay. going forward. That's fantastic. And I think, to be honest, what I would really like to do is I'd like to create an ex um, an exclusive uh, Blackboard video, one of my Blackboard videos about HBAR Suite, because I think it's warranted, because you guys are doing such incredible work. Um, and you, like you say, you are a layer 1.5. You sit very, you sit on top of Adira, but very, very close in the in the applications uh, and the decentralized applications, the dApps that you are building. So I think, but for today, because we haven't got loads of time, because there are so many people that want I want to cover in this video. And um, what I'd like to do really, and what this special is about, is of course, is the HTS, uh, the Hadira token service. Uh, um, and the token HBAR suite. So it seems to me with the people that I've spoken to um, so far, there seems to be two camps. So there are the meme coins, which are, you know, speculative, just good fun with maybe a little bit of utility. And then there are the serious businesses that have a token that may or may not be an integral part of the way that that business works. And it seems to me quite clear that you fit in the latter camp in the sense that you are a very real business that happens to have a token. Would you agree with that? Is that is that how you know um H Suite, the token, is that is that right? It's not a meme coin, it's part of a serious business. Uh yes, H Suite is definitely a utility uh, utility token that basically powers any activity that uh, relies on the smart note technology. And as a matter of fact, we also have a couple of partnerships that we recently acquired on an enterprise side of things, which the latest one that we have announced, it was the partner with uh, Shikom MSG Berhad, which is basically a company that outsources uh, and also does uh, basically uh, IT services. And we partnered with them so that we could provide the Malaysian government, the Education Malaysian uh, Services, the ability to have a system of decentralized identity management for their students. And uh, we are, uh, uh, they're using the private uh, smart node network for that. Uh, or another one is Bankwa, another one, a partner, which is basically uh, a crypto broker that also uh, has a license for a real estate vendor, um, as well as uh, soon to come banking system and trading. And everything is being leveraged through smart node technology. And uh, we're really excited to see that after a couple of years that we've been live, you know, and that we proved ourselves on, on the smart node capabilities, uh, more and more people and projects and businesses are, are getting more interested in this kind of technology because it's, um, 
It's a uh, ultra fast, 80 times cheaper than smart contracts will be, and very much secure. It can be set in a private encrypted manner as well. It's a more of a public and transparent manner. So it's it's a really flexible technology. Okay. And so ju just, just going back to the coin then, and so presumably with all these different incredible use cases, some of which could be operating at a massive scale one day, the, the token is required for these different use cases. Is that correct? Yes, on our current we won uh, version one of the smart nodes. Uh, most use cases usually had to pay H suite for gas fee, like for DEX, Launchpad, and all those features we talked about before. But actually, we are uh, um, on the version two that is coming out. We will make it in a way that H suite will be required, but in a more indirect way. And what I mean by that is that we received a lot of feedback that many times, uh, since basically most of our features require H suite, it can kind of be uh, how you say like a a wall for some people, you know, for uh, for a bigger adoption. So the way that we are adopting this in, in our V2 is uh, that we're going to use NFT subscriptions where those NFTs will be bought by, for example, developers or users in order to be bought with HSuite. So HSuite will always be required. And at the same time, this NFT will give you a certain amount of uh, privileges or HTTP calls for developers. There will be a whole entire system which will uh, broaden more the adoption of our technology and at the same time keep HSuite as a utility token and uh, gas fee per se through the NFT usage. Okay. So you you said we quite a few times. Could you could you just touch on who's kind of how many there are of you? Is is it a large team? Is is it just yourself and a couple of others? Uh well we're actually uh, the core team is quite small we're just six people there is uh, me uh, who I'm uh, the CEO and founder as well as uh, Thomas Chanura who is a CTO and co-founder and we have other four people uh, between designer front end developer two back end developers and but we also like we also have in the non core team like uh, moderators uh, um, social media management uh, uh, as well as uh, council members. Uh, council committees, uh, which are also part of the HSuite ecosystem and, and are part also of uh, our multi-signature treasury where all the funds are safely stored. So uh, partnership manager like uh, HBAR or Ronan that you probably know. Um, but essentially, we're really small for everything they've been doing, for everything that we do, especially on the technical side of things and with uh, very, very little uh, marketing power. We've done like great, incredible things with the... Uh, Small, I agree. Uh, I agree point. completely. Yeah, you've done an amazing job. Uh, to be fair, it, it makes the token very interesting. And talking about the token, so there's. I'm just looking on another monitor here. There's 50 billion uh, total supply, same as um, HBAR. The circulating supply at the moment is a little under 10.1 uh, billion um, tokens. But what's really interesting to me is that in December um, of last year, the price was four noughts one, and at the moment today, it's three noughts nine. So that that's a massive multiple. Do you know why that's happened? What, what what's happened with your token to make it do that sort of uh, multiple? Well, um, leaving aside the fact that it was kind of a bear market, people uh, more people in the dark ecosystem were still more into NFTs. They wouldn't they weren't really much doing or were used to in the community do like more fungible token trading here and there, like other blockchain where by uh, a long time and. Leaving all that aside is the fact that uh, we have been kind of more silently building, building and building, you know, we prove ourselves like that uh, our technology is really, uh, is really powerful and awesome. And it's, it's, it's a very unique set of features. Just the, the core technology that we have, it's a unique value proposition. So, and we realized that we've been massively undervalued for quite some time. So we were just now catching up with like, what the potential value could be, and and in my in my honest opinion, non financial advice or anything, but we we still believe that we're very massively undervalued. Okay, uh, but what but what do you think triggered that then? I, you know, if you if you you know were and perhaps still are massively undervalued, what was the trigger point on the on or around the second of January that meant that the price all of a sudden took off. Do, do you know what that was that triggered that that spike? Or or do you is it just the wider market? Well to be quite honest, I have no clue. I honestly spend most of the time like either doing project management or coding behind. I don't really follow too much certain things on the front end aspect of things, so to speak. Uh, but, but I also want to precise that uh, regarding the tokenomics of the token, we 
this year there will be a tokenomics version 2 coming and there will be some pretty interesting changes that uh, the community will probably like as well and there is no oh, wow. okay, so there's more, more, uh, more to come yeah, there, there is no details out just yet, but uh, it will be very exciting to release uh, this news. And, and we have so so many other news already lined up for like throughout the whole year 2024. So we're, we're super bullish. Okay. So on that then, just talking a little bit about the future, um, do you think that 3.01, which is where the price currently uh, sits with a fully diluted market cap of 45 million pounds, do you think that represents fair value for H Suite, or do you think it should be a lot higher and probably will be a lot higher? Well, for the type of technology and everything that we've built and the potential partnership from uh, enterprise side uh, that uh, we acquired and we potentially can acquire, uh, always I say non financial advice, but to say the least, uh, should be worth hundreds of millions of dollars to okay. a minimum. Minimum, minimum hundreds of millions of dollars. And of course, you can't see the future and this isn't financial advice. It's just your one man's opinion. Absolutely. Okay, no, th th that, that goes without saying, but I want to make that very clear to the to the people at home. So what does the future look like for um, HBAR Suite? Where, where do you see yourself in one, three, five years? Well, in the nearer future, I can say that we look forward to the version two of the smart notes because it will really enable any developer to easily be onboarded in the world of Web3. Like without much of a hassle compared to what it will be able for a developer to learn like a smart contract language like Solity, you know. And, you know, after two years of extensive development and showcases that we've been deploying, uh, as I said, more and more people are starting to finally realize the power that can be harnessed from the smart notes. And... Uh, that, and that's been shown also with the recent enterprise, uh, enterprise partnership that we acquired. And we can only see exponential growth at a faster and faster pace. And we have many, many more updates for our community that we in store. And I, I can say that, uh, that for, for, the, for the pace that we've been going, we're definitely going to need to expand our team soon. And we will be happy to do so in a good timely manner, as well as the fact that we recently announced the H Suite Foundation as well, uh, which will also be used for uh, creating hackathons, hackathons for people to build the smart nodes or for a project that wish to build on top of the smart nodes. There may be like incentives or credits that could be used and that will also help out. And one important thing is that the fact that with the V2, uh, uh, most of the developers will see how easy it is to build on top of the smart nodes. And the fact that we use JavaScript or TypeScript as a base, which is like 195% of developers at least know in the world, compared to like a, a really fraction of uh, Solidity developers are, it can bring like a massive influx of people that come from Web2 to Web3 to build and quite many use cases. So we, wow. we expect a lot coming up. Okay, okay. That, I mean, that's very encouraging to hear as a H-Barbarian myself. Um, when do you think the smart, when do you think this will, you know, this announce these announcements that you've mentioned that are going to be coming on, and these new use cases and the smart nodes. When do you think this is likely to go live? Is it going to be this year? Uh, the smart nodes we do, yes, in a few more months, probably the beginning of the second half, realistically. Um, more or less something like that. But we expect like uh, some pretty quite good amounts, announcements, big announcements, like for once a month, uh, throughout the whole year. Okay. Okay. And if people, so you're clearly going to be ramping up and looking to employ people, but also for people who want to learn more about what it is HBAR Suite do, where's the best place then to go to learn about that? Yeah. Uh, best place is our uh, website, which is uh, hsuite.finance, as well as uh, our the app to showcase all the feature. The, there is a button that redirects you to the app, as well as our uh, documentation, uh, docs.hsuite.finance. There should be the link in there as well. Um, Discord, Discord. I, I suggest everybody to check on Discord. There is a lot of people. The community is very active, and uh, our moderators and community managers uh, are ready to answer questions almost like sixteen hours plus a day, if not more. And uh, wow, yeah, there is a lots of material. We also have a YouTube channel where you can just type H Bar Suite with quite a few videos. Um, Twitter. Um, yeah, we are okay. a little bit everywhere. okay. So what I'll do, guys, I'll put a link in the description below, of course, as I will do for all of the projects. And if you're interested in applying for a job or just want to learn more about HBAR Suite, then click the links in the description below and you'll be able to do that. It's a really, really exciting project. But if, uh, Tabachi, if, if you personally, it, you can't choose your own token, 
What are your, and you, you can either put them in order, but you don't have to. What are your top three favorite other HTS tokens? And they can be memes, they can be anything you like. What's your top three? Uh, I would say Shibar. It's actually okay. one of our memes. It was like the first OG HTS token in the header network. That's That has a whole story of its own that we could like cover in another video. It's like crazy story behind like there is a whole story behind a rug push, like a reverse rug pull that happened, something with the mirror nose at the beginning, but it turned out to be like laughing and everybody like happy at the end. But uh, well, uh, other than that, I would say HTS that comes to my mind, probably Dovo. Okay. Dovo is a good one. And um, well, uh, forgive me if. I forget somebody, some of my friends of projects or whatever, and I would say probably karate. But that's not karate. financial advice, it's just what I'm thinking of personal opinion. Yes. Yeah, and if there was, your personal choice. Yeah, I would say BSL if you didn't have four percent tax for each transfer, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So those are your three choices. Thank thank you very much for that. Is there anything else you want to say to, to the community before we uh, before we go? Oh, just uh, stay tuned up to date and have fun, guys, in the HTS ecosystem. We're very happy to be part of it, you know, and uh, just always be vigilant, you know, and uh, anything, any questions you want to ask. And for developers, please be ready for the V2 because it's going to be a fun ride. And also users and traders will be fun times. I completely agree. It's a very interesting time and it's only getting more and more exciting. It seems to be compounding now. And, and we've been very lucky in a sense because HTS, the Hedera token service, kind of missed the last bull run. And so during this period, everyone who has stayed has stayed for the right reasons, and they've just been quietly building, 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 building. And now as we approach the next bull run, it's all that hard work and all the people that have stayed for the right reasons and not because we're in the middle of a bull market are now going to be thank thankfully be rewarded. And everything's been built the right way because it's been built for the right reasons. So I really, really hope guys like you and your team and your project do incredibly well because I believe you deserve it. And I think Hadira is fantastic technology. And the way we see mass adoption is not through Hedera per se, but it's the people like yourself that are building on it. It's the layer twos, it's the layer 1.5s. So thank you very much for everything you do in the ecosystem. And I, I really am rooting for you. And I think I'm, I haven't bought any HTS tokens uh, so far, but I am incredibly interested in yours, which is up 15.6% just today. That's amazing. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> Bachi, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, thank you. Hi, everybody. So we're on to our next interview now, and I have the absolute pleasure of being with Spencer Bird, who is one of the, am I correct in saying you're one of the founders, one of the founding members of Hashkey Coin? Is it Husky or Hashkey? It is Hashkey. Um, Hashkey. A mix okay. between the Hashkey Wolf and, and the Hashgraph. Okay, that's a nice, yeah, nice. that's a nice touch. Um, so tell us a little bit about the project. I was looking on, I've got another monitor here, which is why I keep looking to my left, and you're described that so the about you on um source of swap labs is a serendipitous footprint of four husky paws on a keyboard unexpectedly left its mark on the Hedera hashcraft network sparking the creation of hashkey to celebrate this spontaneous act of creation we've locked exactly 100 percent of the hash forever in the initial li liquidity pool so is that a cute story or is that what is that is there some truth in that what tell, tell us how this came to be yeah, so we used uh, DaVinci Graph protocol to lock up that initial pool. I believe 99 years was the max at the time that we could lock it up for. Um, so there was, there is definitely truth there. Um, you mentioned before kind of what kind of project we are. We, somewhere in between, I would say, um, we love to get the community involved uh, in, in any way we can. Um, whether it's helping us develop our NFTs, uh, the game that we're working on, uh, or even our website. Yeah, okay. So I don't think, because obviously we were talking, just just chatting before we started recording this. So I don't think the viewers at home are going are gonna to know the question. And the question was, are you a, a serious business with a token or are you a meme coin, you know, uh, with, with no real purpose, which there's nothing wrong with that, you know, as, as long as it's transparent that that's the case and it might just be pure speculation and a bit of fun. Um, or are you something in between? And your answer, I take it, is you're something in between those two. 
Yeah, we, we definitely want to be a fun beacon to create another hero for Hedera that flags cross-chain members. Because, you know, the goal is obviously to create some liquidity pools in Uniswap and, and other chains to, to bring more attention to Hedera. So anything we can do within our project to gain as much traction for Hedera as we can, that is, that's our ultimate goal. That's why a lot of, if you earn roles within our Discord, the NFTs you get are free, the PFP collection that we're building, everything's gonna be free for the community. Uh, just by being active, by spreading the word of Hashkey, which in turn is you know bringing more attention to Hedera. And that is the ultimate goal, goal to bring builders, developers, um, to see the potential that Hedera has to offer with all the fun things we're doing just as a community, you know. Okay. And so are you guys, I mean, you're saying everything for the community is free. So what's the what's the mission? What's the goal behind the business? Is it a charity or are you going to be, where? what's in it for you? Okay. Yeah. So uh, revenue, um, like off the NFTs, um is going to go into obviously the project development uh, to make things a little more serious, um, to get more serious players involved, because I've noticed that the more serious we start to take it and truly invest in the project, whether it's with our website or, or not, we get more attention from people who would like to build with us. Um, so revenue from the NFTs is going to go back into buying back the hash token to the project development. Um, there, there's a lot of holders, obviously people want to make money. They invest into a project. They see a meme coin has a lot of potential because we're building things. It's fun to get involved with. So there's a potential to make money there if you're an early investor. But for us, that's not really the goal. The goal is to spread the word of Hedera. Um, and me, I'm just so passionate about HBAR and Hedera that Hashkey is the outlet that I use, um, to just push that message out. Okay, so so when you say we, who do you mean? Is there a, a large team or tell us a little bit about the structure of your, your enterprise? We get to the Hashkey Pack. There's no LLC currently. Um, there is a lot of talks of it. Uh, we have a transparent Hashkey Pack. Once you, once you get into the Hashkey Pack where we do most of the voting, um, if there's funds that we need to use uh, to, to make updates to the website, or whatever that we need to do, we all talk about it within the Hashkey Pack, which anybody can achieve that role by being active. And we put things up for vote, um, things of that nature. So, so there is a direct route, not only just the Hashkey Pack, but even to my position, um, if somebody else comes through and they have a lot of potential for the project, we have no problem putting them up for a vote to become the next alpha for the project to continue to, to lead the project forward because we don't want to get stagnant in any way. We want to just continue to move forward. Um, you know, alpha. It's a little bit of reference that to the pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I quite like that. Yeah, yeah. that's a nice touch. Um, so, can you talk about? Uh, the tokenomics a little bit how many and can you explain to people who are new perhaps new to this um sort of hts token um world what that means in terms of the hash being uh locked forever in the liquidity pool can you can you touch on the tokenomics and and what that means yeah so there's four 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 so four billion four hundred and forty four million four hundred forty four thousand um total supply uh the initial pool was locked up 99 years using the da vinci graph um all the links and everything uh so people can see for themselves that you know we're not just saying it it's it's really there you can go look um yeah so limited supply limited resources but like what we have left we would like to create pools cross chain um one thing with there's another Hedera hash key. It's a flagship NFT project that we're building uh, with passes and with very, very customizable one of one PFPs for our community. Um, and those royalties and trading fees will be different than the card game NFTs we have through the role structure, which that revenue will be used to buy back hash uh, on a regular basis, making monthly announcements on buybacks. And there's going to be token burns as well as 
sending some to the locking pool, not just burning, but we will be taking tokens out of circulation with uh, secondary trading fees on those NFTs, at least for the Hedera Hashkey, the 444 collection. Um, the card game, we need a little more of those funds to go towards the development of the game that we're building. So it's just a 3% of the 5% royalties and the rest goes back to the community through airdrops, through events, through just different ways we keep people active and involved. Um, cause, cause we don't want to dump too many tokens on communities through giveaways or on, on members. Cause a lot of people, you know, they get a, they get a bag like that. More people often than not are, are likely just to sell it or get back into H bar. So we really want to make sure that we're using those funds appropriately and, and driving up the value of the token itself by just burning tokens. Okay. That's, that's, yeah. And it's sometimes a difficult balance, isn't it? Because you need to dispose of some of the tokens in order to have the funds to build the project, but you don't want to do too many to liquidate and, and then hurt the price of the uh, the existing holders and hurt the price of the token itself. So just looking at that, um, is it is it correct? You, look, you only launched in January of this year? Yeah. Okay. So early days, but even today you are 453% up from where you were originally launched. So that's, uh, that's impressive, isn't it? Yeah, it's been it's been a fun ride. Been yeah, a fun ride yeah, for sure. Uh, that's amazing. Um, so if people want to get involved, they want to learn more. Where's the best place for them to go? Yeah, definitely come check us out on X at Hashkeycoin. We have a link there where you uh, come jump in our Discord. You can check out all the other things we have going on. You can look at our website where we have a game built out. It's a coin shooter game where we use different projects, different uh, Hedera token service tokens, pitchers to shoot, sauce and stick bug and um, Hashkey and all that fun stuff. So there's lots of good ways that you can kind of check us out. It's also hashkeycoin.com. That's our website. Maybe you can check us okay. out there as well. Okay, I'll put a link, uh, guys, in the description below uh, for you to check that out. I'll put a link to all of the people that are involved in this video. They'll be below. And, and I'll put uh, the links that Spencer just mentioned there. And Spencer, last question. Um, if uh, you could, you don't have to put them in order if you don't want to, or you can do if you want to, your top three other HTS uh, tokens, what are they? Your top three. Top three. First, I'm going to have to go with Sauce. I'm a big believer in Saucer Swap. Um, got in very early, minted a couple sets of their NFTs. Just really, really believe the, in the project. Love my sauce. Um, Hashkey, of course. I like my Hashkey. It's, it's just a fun. Can't awesome... pick your own. So two others. Okay, okay. okay. Hashkey, Hashkey, and Hashkey. No. Uh, <laughs> sauce. Uh, I like W. I, I like what they're building. I like what they're doing. I really like um, the sustainability aspect of a lot of these cryptocurrencies. Getting involved in that way is just very unique to me. Um, and I also, I, I really like H suite. I really like what they're doing. Uh, I like their token. I like the idea, uh, speculating on them. I think that's another great HTS token to kind of check out. Okay. Uh, well, it will, luckily I've got all three of your favorites uh, are going to be a part yeah. of this, this mega HTS video that we're creating. So that's going to be really interesting. I'll let them know what you, what you said. Actually, I've got one more question. Where where do you see your project? What's the dream? So say in a year's time, we're having another chat, we're having a catch up. Where, where are you going to be? What are you going to be doing? And, and what, what if you're comfortable saying, and you don't have to if you don't want to, what do you think is fair value for your token? Um, we, we definitely will hit an all-time high again. Um, we have a peak hitter contest so people could kind of guess what they think that that price is going to be. And there is really massive rewards for people who get that right. Um, I see our, our game fully built out. Um, it's just a card game with our, with our cards that we have. So it's under development. And I see that, you know, pr price wise, I'm really not too concerned with it. More just um, trying to build something fun for our community with the game, with the PFP collection. So Hopefully we do well. Hopefully that reflects well in the price action, but only time will tell. Okay. Well, 
I wish you the the best of luck. You you seem like a I really interesting, genuine genuine guy. So yeah, I'm going to be having a closer look at this. And of course, I'll let everyone know if I if I invest in this and I buy, I'll be letting everyone know I do. So, but I am going to be take, definitely taking a, a closer look, having met you. Um, yeah, it's 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 really exciting, and I, and I'd like to support you if I can. Thank you ever so much really for your time, Spencer. That. It's been great. Thank you. Yeah, it's been awesome. Thank you for having me. Ah, oh, no worries, buddy. Hi, everyone. So up next is the one and only Karate Combat. And I have the absolute privilege of being joined with Only LARPing. What's <laughs> up, man? How are you, sir? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Must... So it's I want people to, in the first, before we talk about anything to do with Karate, the token, I think people should be aware that they, and they need to take note of this man's work ethic because I work hard and I recognize it in somebody else. To put this into context, it's 7 a.m. For, for <laughs> only laughing. It's yeah. Monday morning, 7 a.m. Monday morning, the weekend after a massive event in Mexico. And yet he, he's up. He's, I hope, ready and has made yeah, time ready. to speak. You ready? Yeah. So yeah, he's, he's made time pleasure. to speak to us. And you, it is true, though. What do you think you called yourself? Last time we were chatting, you, I think you described yourself as an Olympic. What was it? Olympic? A screen time Olympian. Screen time Olympian. And it's true because um, you really have a fantastic work ethic. Where does that come from? Uh, obsession, I think. You know, I think that's the obsession only way it comes from. Um, I guess whatever. I'm, yeah, just like kind of an obsessive personality, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So you, you, yeah, you get you get uh, hooked on something, and you just got to keep keep pushing and pushing, is that? Yeah, yeah. This this role is especially tempting because so much of it is uh, just like relatively easy not to stop. It's like a lot of communication with people, and you know, some online, some face to face, and that's that's easy to do twenty four hours a day. Um, unlike some other things that you know, you just be exhausted. Um, and then yeah. crypto is so global that uh, there's a, there's always someone to talk to if you open your phone. There's some always someone awake, I guess. Yeah, because and where are you now? Are you on the moon? I am on the moon. Um, I I uh, came back here after KC uh, forty four. Okay, fantastic. It's, and how was the weekend for you? Was it good? Is it everything it was, you hoped more? It was. Yeah. Um, where to start? So the the event was pretty smooth. You know, we uh, it was a little weird. We di we didn't like our venue, um, and we changed it at the last minute. So we were gonna do a VFX show from a a smaller spot, um, and we didn't like it. And we also we realized we had a, a bunch of VIPs coming, and we found this place we loved, which is uh, the venue we had it at, a place called Quarry Studios in uh, Mexico City. Um, so it's an old film studio and it really looked fantastic on camera. And it was, it was actually very smooth. Um, you never know what you're going to get when you get a live event, things can go wrong. You know, in the past we've like lost the internet, <laughs> the power has gone down, uh, but it was extremely smooth. Uh, the setup was pretty easy. Um, people were really psyched to come and the event was fantastic. Uh, the, the Casey card was a banger. I mean, I don't know how many knockouts we had four or five knockouts and TKOs. Um, the pit submission series that we did was, I think, incredibly entertaining because, you know, you had two submissions in like the first two or three minutes on both of them. Um, Craig Jones and Phil Rowe were absolutely hilarious, uh, both marketing the fight and then in the fight itself. And then the brand new thing, the IFC that we did, um, you know, it, it went like, ridiculously viral beyond any hopes that I could ever have. Um, you know, I think like every big account in crypto Twitter retweeted it. I mean, um, from Kobe to Mario and a fall, I mean, we must've got like 20 million organic impressions on Twitter alone over the last wow. 48 hours. 20 million. That's seriously impressive. Um, it's just a guess, but. So the, Obviously, the, the the big topic uh, online, and and it seems to be quite a split camp, is should influencers and YouTubers and celebrities be fighting? And this was this weekend was kind of your first proper foray yeah. into you know with the BitBoy thing and and, yeah. and everything else. Can you touch on that? What are your thoughts now that the 
now that you've had time to reflect, what what are your thoughts? Would you do it again? Was it a success? Do, do you think it dilutes the sport or or are you a fan? So we would we would absolutely do it again. It was definitely a way bigger success than we could have even guessed. Um I think that the the fighters really trained very hard. Um and they did something that's extremely difficult and scary to do and something that I wouldn't do. Um so mad props to all of them. Um I I don't think it really dilutes the sport, especially when you have it in the same time and place as the real guys, because you're watching them and they're incredibly athletic. And then you see influencers who are also probably much more athletic than 99% of us, frankly. All these guys are, you know, you had one ex-NFL guy in there. You had three guys who had competed in the MMA in there. Everyone on the stage was way more athletic than me um but still like the <laughs> it's like compare to compare them directly after these incredible athletes um and, and also going for a much shorter period of time i think it gives you a new respect for how hard it really is to do what these guys do um and people people really enjoy it i think we 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 didn't know how it would look nobody's really as far as i know nobody's ever done influencer fights in a rule set like this um influencer boxing really took off um on youtube uh with ksi um logan paul and uh you know i i think that the ordinary influencer boxing format is if not played out uh, a little bit um you know people know what to expect uh, but with this rule set and with the smaller gloves, I think it brings a whole new flavor. And, you know, I think we'll also expand it to to mainstream influencers as well as crypto influencers, because I think it'll bring a ton of attention to karate combat. I completely agree with that. I think it's it is it is a new um obviously it's a different um combat style and so there is more nuance and it gives more opportunity you know with with kicking being allowed etc so and i i have to agree actually i was i was very surprised at how seriously everybody took it and how yeah how hard they must have trained because it is exhausting and they went in the full mexico distance city somewhere. too i mean in, in I mexico gotta be honest, city a lot of us yeah. a lot of us got sick um I felt horrible. It's it's 2,000 feet higher than Denver. Um, it's really quite difficult to breathe there unless you've been there for like three weeks. It's it, The air is very thin. Um, so one thing I learned, um, this is not something that intuitively uh, would have come to me, but one thing I learned over the last like seven years or so is uh, the audience shows up for fighters that they know. Um, and bringing in influencers that everybody knows is the easiest way to bring a lot of people to watch Karate Combat. And I think Karate Combat's format is incredibly entertaining. It's still not easy to get people to show up that haven't watched it yet, you know? And so, you know, in a way, this is probably the best marketing we could ever do. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, get, get because there, there was definitely, I've been seeing in, you know, different ecosystems online, certainly on Twitter, uh, X, uh, as it's now called, um, that have never discussed karate combat before, but it was every, it was literally everywhere I was looking. So yeah, um, yeah it's definitely working. So um, obviously, people people understand. I don't think anyone watching this is, isn't going to know what karate combat is. Of course, I'll put links in the description below. So if you want to check it out after, I highly recommend you do. Um, in regards this this video, of course, is about HTS Hadira Token Service, and there's sort of more the token side of people's sure. projects. Um, I've been talking to a lot of meme coins and I've been talking to a lot of businesses that have a token that is at some level integral to integral to the way they operate their company. What what role does karate token play for karate combat? Yeah, well, um a lot. We we really bet the whole league on it. So um the original idea uh that we came up with and the reason we did all this was to build up only gaming. Um up only gaming uses some DeFi ideas to allow um, token holders to vote on which fighters they think are going to win and earn a little bit more tokens if they uh, accurately predict the fights with no risk of token loss. Um, that's an idea that we fell in love with because we thought that it would work both for our ordinary sports fans and for crypto people. 
Um, but to pull it off and to to do it and make it no disrespect to meme coins because I love meme coins and I think they're becoming the new social tokens and there's some evidence there around our fight that we could talk about, you know, with uh, Ben Coin and and HPOS 10i. Um, but in order to build the token karate and build up on the gaming and make it not just meme coin, we had to completely restructure the league. Um, my my buddy and I, we had owned the league essentially outright. We sold the entire thing to an ownerless foundation that we set up that was structured um, such that um, the foundation could actually be governed by the token holders. So in addition to up only gaming, you also have governance utility with the karate token. So it's the first sports league that's ever been governed uh, by a crypto token. And on top of that, something that we've been rolling out um, and and we'll continue to roll out from now until uh, May um, is that really all the perks that ordinarily flow to owners of sports properties should also flow to the token holders. Um, one of the big reasons that people buy sports properties is actually for the perks that come with them. Um, and since there are no owners of the karate uh, of of karate combat anymore, um, all those perks should really flow to the token holders. So I see the the current utility of the HTS token, Garati as um, up only gaming governance and token gated experience or what we're calling member benefits. Okay, so for people who don't know, up only gaming effectively means that you 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 can bet on the fighters in the Karate Combat app, but if you if you're wrong, you you don't lose. You just keep your coins. And if you win, exactly. if you're right, you win. And if you lose, you lose nothing. That's um, right. which and by the way, the way you, you you set it up, I think, is 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 revolutionary, clearly, because there's nobody doing anything at this level uh, or size in any industry that I know of. That I mean, people are trying to, but no one has achieved what you've achieved in the model and the business structure that you've done it in terms of handing over ownership, you know, the community owning effectively and making big decisions um, and how much voice they have is dependent on how many tokens they hold, which I think is fantastic. But do you think just with my Web2 business brain, is it is it all a bit fluffy? And I mean that with respect. But and what I mean by that is that I saw on the weekend there were companies that were taking real bets on the yeah. fighters, and they'll be making a fortune on that. And that's your yeah. that's your business. So it, I guess my two it's a two part question. One is it sustainable, and two, what's the long term plan? Because clearly you're you're right for partnering with a, a betting company or becoming one yourself. Is that ever going to happen? Or is that something you're just not interested in? Oh, so well, I, well, absolutely. Partner with um, a betting partner. Um, it's one of the biggest sponsorship categories for sports. Um, karate combats the foundation, the the model. It's as in you know traditional sports league. We do not monetize up on the gaming for a bunch of reasons, um, and so that's you know one of the biggest categories we're chasing and and talking to a bunch of folks. You know, I think eventually after you cast your vote, you'll get a pop up that says, hey, you want to go cast a real bet at X, Y, Z? You know, that'll probably happen pretty quickly, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, I, I do think it's sustainable. Um, so the average player um, that played up on the gaming this pack, past weekend won 5.9 percent more tokens. I think when people first hear the up on the gaming idea, they immediately think, oh, like I'm going to double my money if I get my picks right. Um, that probably would not be sustainable it would just be too much token issuance it would be like distortive to the price and discourage people uh still all the rewards would flow back to the existing token holders that are playing so it would just be like a really really big token split on every single event it's it's not like it would um fundamentally harm anyone because yeah the but the price would definitely go down if you were issuing two X more tokens every event. That's that, that's not what's happening here, though. No, they're 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 very similar to sort of staking rewards in that in that it sense. Is. Like, yeah, it's gamified yeah. staking. Um, gamified staking. Yeah. Way more fun. Um, and sure. I, I yeah. really I really wish DeFi. You know, the idea really came out of DeFi. I was obsessed with DeFi um, two two to two you know two to three years ago. Um, starting with DeFi Summer, and it really uses a lot of DeFi ideas. Um, and I, I think that actually more um, decentralized finance protocols should actually integrate things that are as fun as humanly possible because, you know, below the fold on CoinGecko, it's really a retail buyer base. And retail, 50%, they want to have fun. 
Um, and if, if you don't entertain them, they leave uh, and they go do something else. And so I, I would encourage any crypto project to try and make what they're doing as fun as humanly possible. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think nearly everybody is is in it for um, the experience as much as, and in some cases, more than the actual absolutely. potential upside of earning tokens. Yeah, absolutely. So how, so how will that work long term then? Because where are the tokens going to come from? You, you've got a cap supply of 110 billion uh, tokens. Yeah. So, so yeah. where because, because there's no losers, you know where where how's that how does that work long term? Yeah, so the way we set it up um, for the medium term at least is we put enough rewards on the balance sheet of the foundation for about three years of playing the game. Um, after that, the token holders will have to vote: should we continue the game as is and issue more tokens? Um, should we amend the game? Should we, you know, ditch the game? And I think I'm optimistic that. A, like people will continue to enjoy it, and B, they'll sort of understand over time that it doesn't really hurt anyone. Um, the only the only people that are sort of disadvantaged are people who are too lazy to play or just speculating on the token and leaving their tokens at the exchange. Um, sure, there might be some extra tokens issued beyond 110 billion, which in crypto, you know, still because of like this Bitcoin path dependence, like people are still like you know, so worried about extra tokens. But if all the tokens are going back to the people that hold it, fundamentally, from a financial perspective, it's just a token split, right? It's just this, this gamified token split. Nobody ever thinks like, oh, the, the to there's a token split, like I'm going to get harmed. Or nobody who has, you know, spent a little bit of time in finance, at least. Um, so I, I, I'm optimistic that in two to two and a half years or whatever, when the time comes up that the token holders will vote to issue a little bit more tokens and continue the game. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and as you say, yeah, if they're going, if they're going directly to the people that are holding them anyway, it, it's kind of inconsequential, I guess, in terms of, of price. Yeah. And on that point, you've, you've been at, so Karate, um, Karate token has been at, I'm just looking on my other screen now. Um, so this is priced in, in British pounds. But three zero seven for, for it was around hovering around three zero five three zero eight um for for quite a while and then we've started to see in in around um November of last year we've started to see a, a pretty steady or oh, a pretty solid uh, uptick in the price and today we're sitting at two zero three um do you know why what's caused that what's caused that to start that kind of bull run oh Man, your guess is as good as mine. Um, I try not to talk about price too much. Um, or actually, I try not to talk about it at all. Um, I would say, you know, getting away from price and just talking about the underlying adoption, uh, the number of karate holders, the number of people that are playing the game, especially, has been rising really fast. We had almost 40,000 people play this past weekend. Um, that's up from about a thousand at our first event. Um, we've only had seven events since the token launched. Um, wow. Yeah. And I think we're also experiencing tremendous traction on the underlying sport. Um, our awareness has really been growing faster, I think, than any of us could have hoped. Um, so right now I feel like we're sort of firing on all cylinders across the sport and Web3. Um, and Perhaps that has something to do with it. I'm sure the market has something to do with it. Um, the market was very frosty um, when we launched, um, and now it's quite hot. Um, yeah, well, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> okay. well, I think I, I actually agree. Yeah, it's a combination of things. I think the overall market has, as you say, there has been getting some positive attention. The whole the token service um, becoming accessible to m many more people has made the whole thing um, become so sort of, you know, it's greater than some of its parts. So it's getting more and more attention and then that compounds. So a lot of people think that success or accumulation of customers or anything sort of is, is a trajectory like that. But actually, you normally see it's more like that because the 40,000, it doesn't just go up 1,000 every week. It, it goes from one to five to 10 to 40 to 120, you know, and then a million and so on. Um, generally speaking. So I think we're just starting to see the beginning of that. Um, I hope anyway, for you guys and for Hedera and for the the, the fighters, because I know you treat them incredibly well. Um, and that's something that isn't the norm in combat sports. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think, 
you know, it's, uh, you know, we got to do it in a sustainable way. I'd say the, you know, karate combat is the only sport in the world where the athletes actually have some on-chain earnings, which opens up some pretty cool uh, crypto ideas. Um, but yeah, if, if uh, karate combat continues to perform, the karate token continues to perform, uh, the fighters will benefit um, quite well. Uh, 10% of the up only gaming rewards go to the fighters at each event. Uh, well, that's above that's and beyond good. the contracted pay. Like none of them are counting on that for anything, as far as I know. Um, you know, some of them are for sure starting to pay attention, but that's just a, a bonus. Yeah. Uh, that, well, that's really, really good to hear. And that, hopefully that number continues to grow. What What do you think? I know you don't really want to talk price and I understand why, but what, what do you think is fair value for karate token where would you like to see it be for the for the fighters for the community do, do you have an idea in mind you personally i mean as an alien what um what's fair value? <laughs> i'm not sure no i i don't know um it's a know. it's a really novel structure um it's a huge experiment right uh there is no other sport in the world that's governed and gamified by a token the token does not represent ownership it can't it's just a piece of code it's literally impossible um from a, a tech and regulatory perspective um so it, it governs the league which is owned by no one um it gives you access to this really fun game and then it gives you access to all the perks that traditionally come with owning a league um if if it were equity which it's not you could you know compare it to these other sports leagues um but I don't know, maybe a token's better or worse than equity. So we will see. Okay. Yeah, fair answer. Hey, do you have you had a phone call yet from UFC or anyone like that? Do they, are, they, are you on their radar? You must be. Oh, sure. yeah. We talk to them all the time. Um, really? We're, we have a very good relationship with them. Um, they, I think they just picked up Karate Combat on Fight Pass for the entire year, non exclusive, which is a little bit unusual for them. Uh, most of the the events that they carry on there, I think, are exclusive. Um, I think they really enjoy working with us because compared to other young MMA organizations, we're not like going after their fighters and you know directly competing by offering higher pay, which is something they hate. Uh, we are pulling fighters from a different fighter pool. Um, we are going after the best strikers in the world, and uh, strikers recently um have a tough time competing in the ufc why is that uh so the ufc started over 30 years ago um it, the original marketing hook was um basically let's put up a boxer against this jujitsu guy and see which discipline is the most effective fighting discipline in the world and so for the first x years or whatever it was a free-for-all but over the course of 30 years um, it became apparent that the most dominant style um, for fighting in the UFC was jujitsu and grappling. And so most of the, you know, most of the be dominant belt holders there are really, you know, quite dominant in grappling. That's something we take out of the sport um, and it leaves a path for dominant strikers to compete and hold karate combat belts. It makes, in my opinion, just my personal opinion, it makes more exciting viewing as well because you don't have a couple of minutes of highly skilled but not very entertaining wrestling on the floor. Yeah, I mean, you don't do jujitsu, do you? No. Yeah, me neither. But I think if if you do, if you if you and there's a lot of people, you know, it's probably the fastest, you know, grappling jujitsu is probably the fastest growing segment of combat sports from a um, a participation perspective. Um, and I think if you do them actively, it's it's really quite interesting. It's extraordinarily technical. Um, it's a real mind game. But still, most people don't, and they don't understand what's going on, myself included. Um, and they get bored watching two guys, two women roll around on the mat for you know fifteen minutes. Yeah, it's it's like watching you know if you're not interested in chess, it's like watching two guys play chess. You don't understand the exactly. rules. Exactly. You're just watching guys move pieces around a board. Yeah, exactly. But everybody, everybody understands, you know, punching and kicking to the head. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. That's probably, that should be your tagline. Um, <laughs> so, so what's the future uh, for our karate in, in the next year, two years, three years? What, what does that look like? I mean, not the token, I mean, the, the, the project. Yeah. Um, 
So on the sports side of things, I think it's it's really more of the same. Continue to level up our partnerships. Um, we know we we announced a big one. Uh, it probably got buried in some of the the event, but we launched a really you know announced a really big partnership with Dubai's Department of Economy and Tourism and Sports Council to bring Karate Combat um, to the Emirate over Token Twenty Forty Nine Week. Um, we'll be there April 20th. So working on partnerships like that is a big focus. Um, leveling up the locations, the production value, having more events, um, you know, for this year, you know, trying to do at least 10 events. I think we're on a, a good path to do that. Um, wow. Growing out, growing out these, um, you know, experimental formats like pit submission series and IFC. Um, on the product side of things, we've got a, you know, this huge product roadmap that will probably, you know, <laughs> never shorten. It feels like, you know, in H1, we're really focused on product led growth. Um, you know, we've got a referral program that's ready to launch. Uh, we're working on an affiliate program and then also the token gated experiences. So May 12th is the first anniversary of the karate token. Um, and, uh, you know, it's well discussed publicly that we want to launch all these token gated experiences or member benefits by by May 12th. And and it'll be, you know, partially productized by then, um, you know, to get rewards to our top thousand token holders. It, it has to be, you know, really through the app. Realistically, we can't do it um, via email. OK. And to give people watching, uh, if they're interested in that coming up quite quickly. What what kind of level do they need to be? What what's the top? What's the thousandth holder look like? You know, is is it a million tokens, a hundred tokens? Do, I know you went off, off the top of your head, but just roughly, do you have an idea? Um, yeah, I could, I could find it. I, it's actually like laid out in the governance post, I think. Um, so it's it's not based on the number of tokens you have. It's based on your annual up only gaming earnings for the previous year, and then every right. event we also give away prizes. Um, I think it's even though, um. You know, there's probably only, let's see, there's, um, I think there's only two events before kind of the annual snapshot, but if someone came in, you know, bought a million tokens and played a couple games, my guess is that they would still be well on the up on the gaming leaderboard. Right. Okay. Okay. That, that That's good to know. Um, so you need about a million tokens, play a few games, and then you're in with a chance of, of, of getting those extra additional experiences. Um, when when Europe, because obviously you know I'm based in the UK and I'm very keen to attend one of your your events. Um, and if if you're not coming to Europe anytime soon, then I'll definitely be coming to you. But a, a, do you have any plans for Europe? So we don't have any events announced in Europe, but you know Dubai isn't that far. No, it's not. No, that's true. So you call it. I, I'm being lazy. I guess is what you're trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> a few people have asked have asked me to ask you if I can fight somebody. Um, I don't know who I think they want me to fight the guy from Coin Bureau guy, but um, Bureau. yeah, because he 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 didn't give Hadira a very favorable uh, a very favorable review. Well, it was very a, unfair that's, review. Okay, that's a narrative. You know, one of the most important things about a fight is the marketing lead up, and if there's yeah. beef, um, that's a narrative that's very easy to understand. There's other narratives that work, but that's one of the easiest. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if if you're, you know. Willing, I see you working out in the gym all the time. Um, you appear to be in very good shape. Uh, I I would say if, if it's, it's something you're serious about, um, we should talk about it. Um, yeah, I'd love I to see I, Brandon I think, in there too. I think Brandon would be fantastic. Um, Brandon, I got a crypto masons because maybe I'll fight crypto mason. Um, because he's, he, he's he says he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. Okay, fine. Because we're quite similar sizes, I guess. Um, is, is, no. is, is uh i guess wife or fiance um meg you know yes Mike's for real she would be fantastic to get in there um she also says she doesn't want to i totally and i'm never gonna harass people to get, get in there if they don't want to because again as no. i said it's something that i probably wouldn't do uh, to be fair i think having what i the little bit i know about meg i think she'd beat me i fancy my chances yes. With 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 Mason, but not so much with Meg. I think she'd actually. <laughs> I think he'd. I think he'd agree with you. <laughs> um, that's fantastic. I don't think. By the way, I just want to clear this up. I don't think Guy from Coin Bureau even knows I exist, so there is no okay. beef. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Certainly not from his end, anyway. Um, is there anything else you want to say to the community while I've got you? 
Well, thank you. You know, y'all have been tremendously supportive of the league. Uh, it's been a pleasure meeting and, and working with you and getting to know so many of you. I hope to see as many of you out at events as possible. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Only laughing. Thank you so much because you are one of the hardest working people I know in the crypto space. <laughs> it's not the hard, hardest working. So I hope it's, oh, I know it'll be a raging success and that you deserve every every bit of it, uh, as does the, your community who are incredibly engaging and welcoming and warming. Every time somebody's got a question, I've never seen any of the, um, the hostility or arrogance that can come sometimes, particularly with more um physical and masculine esque sports um so it's been a it, it's it's been really nice to sort of learn more about karate combat and thank you for all your time because i know uh we've we spent quite a few times so i really My appreciate pleasure. that brilliant okay well i'll leave you to it um and let you get some well-earned rest thanks man thanks for everything brilliant. thank you so much bye later Everybody, so up next is Unlucky Token, another HDS token on uh, Hedera Hashgraph. And I have the pleasure, I think, I don't know yet, of being with Unlucky, a representative from Unlucky, who wants to remain anonymous. And I will be asking why, and I'm sure they're going to explain that in a moment. Um, I, just setting my stall out and being honest, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with um, people wanting to remain anonymous for the obvious reasons, but also because, which for me, Web3, one of the core principles of Web3 is trying to move away from large, you know, faceless corporations. And, and, and it seems to me like we might be replacing these large faceless corporations with thousands and thousands of little faceless corporations. But maybe I'm wrong. And maybe this is this, you know, there's good reason for this. So welcome very much. And thank you very much for your time, uh, Unlucky. First of all, can you tell us a little bit about the project? What What is Unlucky? Uh, hi, Max. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Unlucky is a meme coin and NFT uh, project. Uh, it started out actually as a dare. Uh, a group of us uh, was having a few drinks, and um, it was actually on Friday the 13th, uh, last October. Um, we were just talking about the misfortune, because uh, a bunch of guys were into crypto and all that, and we are talking about DGNs and broken shattered dreams and whatever else. Um, and then the topic came up um, about um, just things not working out right uh, for, you know, if you've been in crypto long enough, the roller coaster is, is pretty uh, <laughs> pretty wild. Um, yeah, so I was literally there into starting this project um, and, you know, over a few drinks uh, and that's that's how it started. Uh, the story morphed a little bit um, from from the initial discussion um, of, over the drinks, um, and it, it turned out that um, because half of the people that I was having drinks with don't even know about um, HTS or the Hedera at all, I'm probably the only one in that group that is pro Hedera. Um, but um, the opportunity came um, when I was actually if you. Remember back last year, uh, HTS or especially meme coins, Hedera was having a really rough time. Um, not so much because the price was going down, but because of the endless rug um, that were in the ecosystem. And being um, a Hedarian for what? Uh, I think I bought my first H bar at the end of 2020 there. And um, being in the ecosystem and seeing all this rug, uh, all this pump and dump, um, this is what basically uh, gave me the inspiration to start Unlucky and to pick the storyline uh, to go down the route of um, taking on the status quo, the gatekeepers, uh, and pointing the fingers at all these ruggers, pump and dumpers. And this is probably. Um, this is not probably, but it is the reason why I want to be anonymous it's because the subject matter that I'm uh, digging into with the uh, with the project itself, uh, even though it's more or less um, a fun side of things uh, and onboarding some, um, which we can talk about uh, a bit later, uh, onboarding some uh, interesting um, artists onto uh, Hedera, uh, but the 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 core of it or how it all started was basically calling out all the ruggers, all the 
pumping dump is a uh, very small group in the mean point, um, they are a mean point where they basically just their own points, get new users in, and then dump on them. And um, it gets to the point where I just had enough of it and I just have to do something. And hence, Unlucky was born. Um, okay. So, so I think that's, that's, that's a really um, endearing um, proposition for Unlucky. Because, but, but I've got a couple of questions around that. The first one being, um, so Unlucky then is not um, people who've given up on life. or Because when I first came across this project, I, I think I got a little bit irritated. And I was like, we shouldn't be celebrating losing. And we shouldn't be celebrating losers. And here's a group of, or yes. an individual or whatever, a loser who wants to celebrate, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, unluckiness. Um, and actually, that's mm. not what this is about. This is actually, you're more, if anything, oh. you're more like a, a vigilante group that's had enough of the communities in cryptocurrency and Hedera and many others being mistreated by influencers and, and other types that create these projects solely for the purpose of people putting money in so they can take that money and then run off. Um, but that's... is that is that is that what it is? Yes, um, Unlucky is actually not a pessimistic character. Um, he, uh, he basically, uh, the premise of Unlucky is that he dares you to stick your middle finger up to all your misfortune, all your bad luck. So it's actually a, a, a play on, even though it's unlucky, but it's actually, uh, he's got a very positive, optimistic tone. Um, yeah, resilient. so it's, it's actually so, so, not yeah, about it, it's celebrating resilience and and it's exactly so, yeah, strength it's, in the face it's of adversity. resilience that makes you stronger, and that's, that's what unlucky is all about, and that's what we encourage people to look. You know, nothing is rosy all the time, you will have bad times, but how you deal with the bad times is basically what the unlucky message is all about. and um, if you've been following us on Twitter or even if you've uh, associated your uh, your wallet, every day we drop a quote that um, that celebrates not your misfortune, but how you recover from it and how you deal with things. Okay. And the one with unlucky is is it's like even from, from day one when the project was started, a thing never go according to plan, but we stuck at it uh, and. You know what? At the end of the day, everything actually worked out better than fine, um, and that's that's what the project is all about. Okay, so with that in mind, then the, the the obvious, the elephant in the room, the obvious question is that if I was setting out, and I, and I do applaud your your mission and your reason for being, because I, I'm a big advocate of of honesty and not setting back the industry and not taking advantage of the vulnerable, obviously, um, but you would think then that your default would be absolute transparency in order to help um, people, give people the confidence to believe in you as a project. And so that they're reassured that you're not going to be a rug and you're not going to be a scam. Now, I'm not suggesting for, for, for a moment that that is what you are at all. I've had no indication of that whatsoever. But I think it would be helpful if you could explain why you and anyone else in the project has, remain, has decided to remain anonymous, given that a whole part of your ethos and the whole reason for being as you've said is to fly in the face of all of these people that, that have been scammers and have have run off so so yep. the, can you see the contradiction there or, or do you just yeah uh, no uh, I, I i see the contradiction but um what you're lacking there is actually how the project is set up um, we're actually the most transparent project you probably will ever come across from the way th how the funding was done to how the tokens uh, were distributed. Everything is recorded, um, and and the money raised from the uh, token sale, we actually lock half of it in a 13 years um, LP. So there, uh, there were measures from the beginning to for the project um, it can't harm the holders and it can't harm the project. Um, so all the liquidity uh, is locked for 13 years, which is unheard of in a meme point, especially, uh, I think we, we locked up 70,000 uh, HBAR in the LP for 13 years, and that has never been done before. Uh, even for uh, utility HDS, um, nobody has done this before. The other half, um, 
of the fundraise is actually still in Treasury, and we've actually been using that fund to develop the NFTs and also to uh, airdrop it back to the users. Now, I actually fund the project out of my own uh, pocket. Um, I took a small allocation of 500 uh, million tokens, uh, which I have not sold, and I actually bought more um, and put it uh, put part of it into the LP as well. Now, uh, I pay for my advisors out of my pocket. Now, my advisors didn't get any tokens. Um, so from day one, um, we structured the project in a way where the project can't dump tokens on holders because one, the project itself don't actually hold much unlucky tokens because the fundraise were in HBAR, so our treasury is in HBAR. Um, what else? Um, yep, so because there's no team allocations and the advisors actually, uh, when they bought the token, they actually the same price as everyone else. So uh, even myself, I actually bought um, part of my uh, allocation at the same price as everyone else. So that basically get all my, uh, uh, I actually have two advisors. Uh, I put my advisors on the same side as the holders. So there were no advantage for them in any way being advisors. Um, they were paid out of pocket. I have no intention and I have not uh, used any of the fundraise to reimburse uh, what I spent on the project. Um, this is actually, and I, and I have no intention of doing so. Now, the, um, what I pay for the project is considered uh, as a gift to the community. So from that transparency uh, aspect, um, the project from day one has been set up in a way where it can't run. Uh, and, it, um, and we actually have quite a, uh, we've got a couple of uh, highly regarded community members that actually uh, did an impromptu Q&A with regarding of how the liquidity is structured, how the funds raised, and how the tokens distributed. We're actually the most fair token distribution uh, ever on, on HDS okay. uh, because everybody pay the same price yes. regardless of their parcel size. So position. somebody buying yeah. 5% or 0.1%, they pay the exact same price per token. Okay, understood. Um, and yeah. So let me let, so, let me because we only have a limited amount of time because we're interviewing so many sure. people. We we, we I want to get mm. all the all the points across yeah. if we can. But no, that's understood. Uh, and uh, and you know, th thank you very much for clarifying that point. But it does then it, it makes and I, I really want to get past this point. But it, I really need to understand this with everything you said. So you're set up to fly in the face of of scammers and alike. You're the fairest, most transparent project in existence. Uh, in terms uh, in the HTS ecosystem, in terms of the way that you you know you've put your own money in, you, you're not dumping on the community, you've done a lockup. I understand all that. So that begs the question: Why wouldn't you want to put your name to this? Uh, you know, is it is it is it because of a job you have in 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 Web two? Is it a security issue? What help people understand why you wouldn't want to put your name to something that is so good and pure? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's. Uh... I've always maintained that I'm not doing this for fame and I'm not doing it for money. Now, if I was doing it for fame, definitely I'll put my name on it and I'm not doing it for money either. Um, I, I get the question asked like, okay, um, are you worried that the project will fail? That's why you're not putting your name on it. And as a business owner yourself, um, I invested about 20, 30,000 of my own money into this project. And when you spend that amount of money in a project, uh, obviously you don't do it to fail. Um, yeah, so from, from that regard, um, th that's, that's pretty much why I, uh, I don't want to be uh, docked. Uh, I want to be uh, anonymous because I can see the project being a massive success. And with that, I would have security issue uh, when that's the case. So that's why um, I want to be anon, purely on the security side of things, not, not because uh, 
I want to dodge the project or I'm going to run away with, with the money because I can't run away with the money. The money is all locked up. And I've got yeah. my own allocation. But, but there's a security uh, which issue. Is but a, I, won't, I, won't, I, won't, I won't press you on that because you know, I'm sure yeah. you have your reasons and, and that should be a good enough answer. And people can make their decision based on, on your answers as they see fit. So it's a security issue. And I, I you know, I will accept that. So you, you mentioned there that you, you, um, you're not doing it for fame and you're not doing it for money. So why are you, why are you uh, doing this? Okay. So I'm doing this one for the community because I'm sick of seeing people get robbed and dumped on by the meme coins of late 20, uh, between mid 2023 to the end of 2023. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Every man and his dog was in the game to, uh, to dump on the next person that come along. And I just got fed up with that. And as, as I say, I'm, I'm not a newbie in that era. I've, I've, been, I've been around since even before a uh, hashtag was started. Um, and, yeah, and to see, the the community get taken advantage in in that way. Uh, I just could not stand there and do nothing about it. Um, and yet, yeah, so the 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 reason for staying anon because I'm actually pointing fingers at some serious group here, and uh, and this is uh, that's that's the biggest reason of all for being anon is because the amount of attention or the finger pointing that I'm point that, that I'm doing, it's in my best interest not to reveal myself. Um, yeah, okay. so... Uh, I mean, yeah, I know absolutely. It's, it's a, you know, Bat Batman wore a mask. You know, a lot of superheroes who fighting fighting villains wear a mask. So that that's fair enough. Yeah. That's understood. So just looking at um, the price... Okay. Uh, aside from, from, from that side of things, now, the, the, about the project itself, um, we're doing something, uh, a few things very interesting uh, with regards to everything is very well planned and scripted. So the character Unlucky itself, is, he's got a very defined character. And, we, uh, and I myself is getting a lot of hit from the community because they look at the characters and they're judging the men behind the characters. But they forget that they're interacting with a character that has a very defined script. He's there to slightly antagonize, but he's actually mainly there to um, not, not so much in, to be an, uh, to antagonize all the other projects, but he's more or less trying to encourage the people that has been dumped on before, the people that has been rubbed before, that, hey, look, those are, are just hurdles. It's, uh, you can recover from that. And as long as you can recover from that, you're fine. But the project itself, now, uh, apart from the, the very interesting uh, tokenomics and the black paper, the NFT that we're, uh, we're doing is, uh, so our next mint will be uh, on the 13th of March. We're onboarding a traditional artist uh, um, onto, the, uh, onto the network. Uh, so at the moment, uh, I'm going through the process of introduce Hedera to him, how to set up wallets and what have you. Now, he's a, a very traditional boomer. He only just discovered digital art. And yes, and but when I'm talking to him about, you know, the, the future of art is basically not so much a printed piece of artwork, but having your artwork accessible on people's devices, whether it be on TVs, mobile phones. And he got really taken on to that. And so I go, I tell you what, why don't we try to get you on Web3? Uh, you leave all the technical side to us. All you have to do is produce the artwork. We'll put it on the ledger for you. And then you can evaluate how it goes. Um, yes, yeah, so, so that's, that's our next project. So our previous uh, NFT has been leading up to this. Our last one, which was only minted a couple of weeks ago, was for wallpapers. Now, you can use the wallpapers as your desktop uh, lock screen. So we're trying to get people to become more familiar with NFT rather than just profile pictures. Uh, we're, we're trying to get them to, hey, NFT is a little bit more than pixelated artwork that you use as your profile picture on Twitter and Discord. But um, you could actually have it on display in its 
full glory on high resolution screen, uh, uh, digital photo frames, and that kind of thing. Yeah. As you know, how LG is uh, going with their NFT TVs. Um, yeah, yes. So we took that as inspiration to say, hey, if LG can do that and they have their own um, artists to onboard, we as a little guy is probably a little bit more nimble and we can do things a bit quicker. So we don't need the LG's TV, but we have the NFT uh, uh, ecosystem here uh, okay. as well as the uh, technology so in uh, in uh Hedera to do all this yeah um just on the, on the price at the moment um so you're i'm just having a look on my other monitor here so unlucky uh tokens currently uh four noughts one six um in sterling in pound sterling yes. do you think that reflects fair value for the for the price of the token or or do you see it as being something different uh i see it as a this uh, it's a measurement of success for the project. Now, the project launched with a predefined market cap, and it was thirteen thousand US dollars. Uh, so, I think at the moment it's just a little bit under three hundred thousand uh, US dollars. Yes. Uh, in terms of market cap, so there are support there from the community that believe in the project, believe in in our storyline, and believe in the mission that we're on. So, um, yes, yeah, so I think that it represents fair value and in terms of what we're bringing to the project and what we have in the pipeline of work, um, it's, there's, there's still potential there uh, for, for us to, to uh, take things further. Okay. And what's the dream then? So t you, you mentioned that taking things further. So what's the dream in one, two, three years time uh, in terms of where, um, will, where will this project be? And what what would the market cap look like? You know, in a, in, a, in in your hopeful sort of when you're dreaming about the project. Well, you know, uh, everybody wants to land on the moon, so uh, that's that's basically our aim. <laughs> but okay. um, yes, yeah, so the main thing is we want. Um, so this March 13th mint is a very pivotal and seminal project for us. If it succeeds and the community really support it. We're looking at onboarding more artists onto the Hedera. And we're looking at traditional artists here who are oil uh, on canvas, you know, where they have their artwork hanging on the wall. So these are the kind of artists that we want to go and, hey, you know, uh, printing, there's a, it's, you can't go past that. But if you look to the future, uh, why print something when you can actually display it on screen? So um, in two or three years' time, um, especially with the success of uh, March 13th, Mint, we're yeah. hoping to onboard at least an artist a month. So Unlucky oh, wow. will become uh, more or less like a, a promoter of real art on Hedera. Uh, and that's then that, uh, that's hopefully, that's you know, a really, really, can... uh, sorry, that's a, that's a really, really uh, great plan to have because... It's it keeps it um, interesting and live, but it's not one a day, yes. one a week. It's not um, you know insurmountable. Uh, we have to wrap up very shortly, so I just wanted to ask if people want to learn more about the project, where can they go to do that? Uh, the best place to go is uh, follow us on uh, X, uh, unlucky underscore hts. Uh, from there, you can find a website, unlucky dot fun. Uh, and the link is also to our Discord, but we are most active on X. On X. Okay. What I'll do, guys, I'll put, as always, with all the other projects, I'll be putting links in the description below. So you don't have to make a record of that if you don't want to. Just click the link in the description below, and it'll take you to all of the different points that Unlucky has just said there. Unlucky, thank you so much for your time. Is there anything? We've got one minute left. Is there anything else you want to say to the uh, community while I've got you? Yeah, no. Um, I, I would just like to... Uh, give a shout out and thank you to all the supporters. Um, the, the, the one that have been there from the beginning and the one that are uh, fighting on our behalf because there, there is a, a lot of pushback in certain circles that have a bigger voice than uh, they appear to be. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, thanks uh, for the opportunity to present our pace, Max. And uh, yeah, I, I love your work and um, yeah, <laughs> I'm just up to be to have the uh, the chance to uh, to come and say a few things to our followers and our supporters. 
Well, thank you so much for taking the time and thank you for your honesty. And I'm sorry if I went a bit hard on you, but I, for me, it's very important because I, I feel that I represent the community and I want to make sure yep. that um, people are doing things for the right reason. And it sounds like you are. And I, and I wish you every luck for the future. And I hope that your unlucky project is incredibly lucky for you. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. I'm absolutely honoured to have Andrew from Tune FM with me as part of the HTS Mega Video. Hi, Andrew. How are you? I'm good. How are you? The dream. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. I know you're incredibly busy. So thank you very much for taking the time to have a quick chat with me about Tune FM. So first off, for people who don't know what Tune FM is, can you kind of give us a brief description of what, what you do? Yeah, so Tune FM is a Web3 decentralized music streaming platform and digital asset marketplace. So when the music gets played, the artist gets paid. Right. Okay. That's a very succinct uh, description. Thank you very much. So would you so what's the difference then between Tune FM and Spotify, for example? So Spotify pays artists close to nothing. Well, they don't actually pay artists anything. They pay rights holders about uh, 0 0.004 cents per play and then the rights holders pay the artists less than 10 percent of that they get their revenue from subscriptions uh, and ads and they basically have to split it up amongst the billions of streams in the platform and so it's sort of a uh, free with ads or subscription model and um we are similar to like a hybrid between soundcloud and uh, Spotify in the sense that the artists, the independent artists can upload directly to our platform. Um, but unlike SoundCloud where they pay them nothing, um, they can actually get paid instantly from the listeners, uh, non-custodial wallet directly to the artist, non-custodial wallet. And all that happens seamlessly. So we're processing streaming royalty micropayments instantly, which enables them to earn a hundred times more than Spotify. Wow. And is that a throwaway number or is that legitimately literally a hundred times more? It's a hundred times more. So um, the 004 number I gave you, there's um, if our rate is about is exactly one penny per minute. So for an average four minute song, it would be four cents. So that's where it's a hundred X. Wow. Okay. And so how do you guys make your money then? What's the, what, how does that business model work? So 10% of every transaction, whether it's a micropayment or a large NFT purchase uh, for an experience, 10% uh, in the jam goes back into the treasury, uh, which is really a deflationary mechanism for a jam. Uh, but jam uh, is turned into dollars uh, via all kinds of mechanisms, whether it's market making or treasury liquidation or OTC deals or all kinds of other things so for people who don't know jam is your your native token uh, as part of your platform is that correct yeah yeah so jam is the native token on hts so we we're the first hts token we we're the first hts token to be publicly listed now we're on 20 exchanges and uh we were one of the first partners of hedera within the first few days that it launched and um had uh, jam powers everything in the platform so the entire digital asset marketplace, everything is priced, bought, sold, traded in Jam, and all of the micro payments are processed in Jam as well. Right. Okay. And then what? So the artists, if they want to, they then have to convert the Jam into into fiat. Is that correct? Yeah. So we have several uh, fiat on and off ramps. So namely, uh, Banksa and C14. Um, and we also have uh, Salsa Swap natively integrated, so they can always swap to USDC or HBAR, um, but they can directly off-ramp Jam with Banksa, or they can on-ramp uh, through C14 with a credit card. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's a really seamless experience for the artist then. And what yeah. how, how, what, what, what does TuneFM in terms of, you know, size, how many, you know, minutes are selling, how many creators are on your platform, how many customers? So we have around 100,000 users and around 10,000 artists, and we're growing. Wow. Wow. And I suppose that one of the, thinking about it, one of the problems with a company like yours is that you have a bit of a chicken and an egg situation. You need the creators to get the customers, and you need the customers to get the creators. So how have you managed to break that cycle? What's, what's the, been the key to your success? 
Yeah, it's definitely a challenge uh, having a marketplace where you need the supply side and the demand side. And, you know, we started small and a lot of word of mouth and a lot of marketing. Uh, we sponsored festivals and showcases and brought a lot of artists in. And we've also done a lot of PR and social media and ads and everything to bring fans in and, you know, all the above, really. And what does the next, you know, one, two, five years look like for, for Tune? So um, in the next year, um, well, very soon in the next week or two, we are launching our mobile app. So iOS, Android, as well as desktop, Mac, and Windows. Um, we're also in negotiations with the big three labels, so Universal Warner and Sony, to bring on the entire uh, licensed music catalog that you would see on a Spotify and um, so we want to achieve parity with uh, Spotify and other competitors. Um, but then we're going beyond that with our music NFT marketplace. So doing celebrity drops with uh, a handful of tier one celebrities with ex exclusive experiences and unlockable perks like backstage passes and VIP parties and meet and greets and things like that. Wow. So effectively, then you're not just you, you're, you're so much more than Spotify because you're you're a streaming service where people can literally just listen to uh, their favorite artists, but then you're also effectively like almost a ticket master where you could potentially buy tickets or experiences, VIP access, early purchases. Is that right? So you're all of those things in one place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We have the full ticketing system and we have unlockable perks. So it's token gated access to content where you have to be the token holder and to unencrypt the locked content. And so you can get access to exclusive real life experiences um, in a limited fashion. Those tokens can be put on auction or sold for a fixed price. You could have a private concert. You could have a meetup with the artist, a dinner with the artist, uh, backstage passes, any sort of thing that the artist is willing to sell to their super fans. And do you have any artists at the moment that I would know? Have you got any household names? Who's kind of your biggest your biggest poll, if you like? So we have Beyonce on the platform. Um, we are working with uh, Wu-Tang Clan on something really special. Um, we're working on a deal with uh, the Michael Jackson estate um, and potential collaborations with Bruno Mars, The Weeknd, um, Justin Timberlake. All of this is uh, in the works right wow. now. Wow. So, so you've got, I mean, th those are some of like, triple a celebrity kind of household name class acts aren't they so that's massive yeah absolutely yeah and um, that's just a small handful uh we have many more but yeah um over the course of this year we're going to see some serious major uh drops from some of the biggest celebrities in the world wow congratulations that's amazing so um, going you. over then to Jam, because this is, of course, the the HTS uh, mega special video. So we've got to talk a little bit about the token. Um, it looks like um, you've got a market supply. What's the total supply? So the total supply is 4 billion. Is that correct? 4 billion tokens? Yeah. Yeah. And the current total, uh, the that's the total supply. And then the circulating supply, oh, it's 3.978 billion. Is that right? So basically almost all tokens are already out in the out in the wild is that correct pretty much yeah okay wow and wh where are those tokens is, have, have they been of people is it yourself is it you know the the artists who's got most of those tokens well it can't be us or it wouldn't be circulating but uh <laughs> it's um it's users it's artists it's buyers it's speculators it's market makers it's exchanges it's otc buyers all kinds of stuff wow okay that's amazing. And so fully diluted valuation, four million, just over uh, four million pounds. Market cap, four million pounds, 24 hour trading. Wow, trade, 20, your 24 hour trading volume is just over half a million pounds. That's amazing. So look yeah. at the price then. It's been on a lot of the tokens have kind of like flatlined and then just really taken off in December of last year. But but your, your, um, um, chart looks incredibly different you've you've been up and down and up and down um and so you kind of launched with a 309 and you're kind of back to where you originally started and you've had some peaks and troughs since then why do you think your price chart looks so different to most other hts tokens 
Well, um, we're the only token that's actually on uh, multiple uh, CEXs. Uh, so we we're way more mature. Um, you know, obviously we were on Saucer Swap day one, um, but most HTS liquidity is only Saucer Swap, and only a few of them have had one CEX listing. Um, so we've been on BitTrue since 2021. Um, and now we're on 20 exchanges, but we're on MEXC, BitMart, WhiteBit, um, several others. If you look at our coin market cap, it, it lists just a selection of them. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, we're, we're, our price is more based on the fundamentals and the announcements and the marketing, and it's less correlated to the overall HTS ecosystem. There is some correlation. Um, but yeah, I mean, we made an announcement in January um, that we raised $20 million. And um, then our token went up 10x, basically. And it's, it's retraced a bit, um, but it's still up, uh, you know, a lot more than where it was before that. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think then? So you're currently at uh, three noughts, nine, uh, but pence that is. So you'd probably be two noughts, one something um, dollars, US dollars. Do you think that represents fair value for Jam? Or do you think it should be far higher or a little lower? Nobody ever says a little low, by the way. Oh, I think it it should be far higher, um, probably closer to one cent. Um, and so, you know, we're doing everything that we can to fully actualize the real value. Um, I yep. think the market cap should be uh, over a hundred million very soon. Wow. Okay. So that that would represent a sort of hundred x almost. That's uh, that's some pretty pretty impressive prediction. Um. Okay, so if people want to learn more about Jam and about Tuna.fm, where do they go? Where's the best place? Of course, I'll put all the links in the description below, guys, as always. But just from you, Andrew, where's the best place for people to reach out to you, whether they want to you know, invest, whether they want to buy some Jam, whether they're a creator or a fan, where do, where do they go? Yeah, so Tune.fm is the best place. The name is the domain. Just type that in. Um, and there you'll find links to all of our socials, so our X slash Twitter um our telegram and if you do happen to buy a million jam or more then you will get granted access through our admin to an exclusive telegram private group called the million jam whale club which is probably one of the most passionate communities in crypto i would say there's literally thousands of messages a day many memes lots of banter and um so i highly encourage you to get in there because that's where all the action is okay fantastic and the reason i'm laughing is because i can actually i concur and i i can definitely uh uh, uh prove that uh, i've definitely felt the the passion that you talk about there in the community because um yeah they were very very keen that i, I interview you and when i mentioned that i'd love to speak to tune fm they haven't left me alone since so they've been absolutely <laughs> kind of to make sure that absolutely tune fm is part of this mega hts video and i'm very glad they did because speaking to you is a real honor and actually learning a lot more about uh, Tune FM. And just for full transparency, of course, as always, when I was researching uh, Tune FM, I have to admit that I'm embarrassed to say that uh, I didn't know too much before, um, you know, engaging with the community. But having researched and had a look into Tune uh, FM, your, 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 your wonderful company, I have bought 3 million uh, jam. So I, I, I certainly qualify for the, for, the, for the club. So I'll have to check that out. Uh, of course, I'll put all the links in the description below for anybody who's looking to learn more and, and, and get involved. Was there anything else you want to say to the community, Andrew, while, while I've got you? Well, I just want to thank you for doing this video and just being um, a Hedera, you know, source of resource, uh, resource for information and uh, credible, you know, researcher in the community that people look up to. So uh, when you made the announcement, everyone in my community started hitting me up and saying, you have to do this interview and I have to do it. And so, uh, so here we are. It finally happened. Well, I'm glad it did. Actually, I've got one more question for you, and it's a personal question. Um, and so you can't choose Jam. What are your favorite three HTS tokens? You can either do them in order of favorite, or you can just say your top three. Uh, and, and this is for you personally, I mean. Well, does HBAR count? <laughs> no, it's not It's not a Hedera token service uh, token. Yeah, true. All right, fair enough um i'd say sauce okay top three that's difficult um yeah because i don't really speculate on other tokens at all uh to be my full 
transparency. I don't own any other H. Okay, you don't have to own them. You can just admire them. It could be other projects, by the way. They can be, you know, Bank Social or Earthlings Lands, or it can be the token of the, your favorite project, if you like. Yeah, I think, you know, maybe Bank Social is interesting. Um, Sauce and X Sauce, there, I get two right there. <laughs> no, I saw a fun one. people. Say Source, Source okay, PSL, and one more. Um, I just really like the name of this um, pool, Moon and Earth. <laughs> okay. Moon and that, Earth. That just looked really cool. Yeah, I don't know anything about the project. I just thought it was funny. Just thought it was funny. And you like the like the, the, Do you know what? There's so many like uh, uh, Doge. It was because everyone loved the the logo, wasn't it? It was literally nothing more than that. Most yeah, just yeah. Most off. these meme tokens. Yeah, there's nothing more. Um, I don't know much about the Guelph thing but the old guy I don't know who it is but it kind of freaks me out a little bit but um I don't know. yeah well that's by design <laughs> Guelph's actually a part of this whole uh mega video yeah and what I love what I, I love heard, about Guelph that video. Uh, what I love about Guelph is his absolute honesty he's like you get nothing this is a mean coin there is no utility there's no promises for the future it is what it is uh and I try to make him as repulsive as possible uh, and I think he he did a pretty good job in, in that sense. So, and I just love it's, the honesty yeah. and how funny it is. And then, and it's over a pound. So, so it's, uh, you know, good luck yeah. to them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see how that works out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair. Okay, Andrew, thank you so much uh, for your time. It's been a real honor speaking to you. Um, and I, I think what you're trying to achieve, both is amazing both for the hedera ecosystem in general for the artists that for too long have been taken advantage of in my opinion and connecting genuine you know passionate legitimate fans with artists i think can only be a good thing for everybody involved and i wish you and your project the absolute best for the future uh, i think you've got a fantastic project and i i hope and know it will do really well so good luck to you andrew and your team thank you i appreciate it Okay, take care. See ya. Bye.